Hello. Right. Um, it is normal for the DUSA Deputy President to actually chair the hostings, but for clarity, uh, please can I introduce tonight's chair, Ms. Dr. Ian Francis. Hello. Is, is this working at all? Yes? Okay, good. I'll try and get a bit closer to it. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I used to be the academic secretary of this university until uh, oh, about a year ago when I decided to retire. And I've been a, an external trustee on the board of trustees of DUSA for the last couple of years. Um, so I'd, all I'd like to do at the beginning is to welcome you to 2013 DUSA elections hustings and give you a brief um, description of what's going to happen which is as follows. The pattern will be that each individual candidate will make uh, a short speech. And when I say short, I mean short. Between three and five minutes, closer to three would be best. Five minutes, we'll probably lose the will to live. So three minutes preferably. Speech from each candidate. Then there'll be a, a group of questions from me, which some of which I've gleaned from um, uh, the student suggestions that have been put in the boxes that have been around the university for the last week or so. At which point contested uh, posts, the cont each, uh, let's call them contestants because that makes it sound more interesting. At which point the contestants will be able to question each other as well to a certain degree and to rebut each other if they think the other person's come out with a complete load of garbage. Then we'll ask for questions from the floor. And could I ask you if, 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 if people are wanting to ask questions from the, from the floor, could they first of all identify themselves and secondly try to remember not to be abusive and unpleasant or, un, well, not unnecessarily unpleasant anyway and preferably not abusive. The running order will be um, as follows. Honorary Secretary first, VP Student Welfare, VP Engagement, Independent Court Member, VPSA, uh, VP Student Activities, VP Campaigns and Communication, Deputy President, and then the one that we're all waiting for, the President. Um, we'll probably need to have a break about halfway through, because I don't know about, you probably are all terribly um, politically correct, but I'll need a fag halfway through, so I'll have to nip out for ten minutes. <laughs> so let's um, let's start with uh, no more chat with the uh, post of honorary secretary, and I'd like to call the first person up, which is Mr. Hustler Wright. <laughs> Who must be here somewhere? Oh, there he is. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd first like to thank you for coming tonight and listening to me to, for the consideration of the role as Honorary Secretary. For those of you who are not aware of who I am, my name is Tim Hustler. I'm a second year's politics student. I am originally from London, but have lived in Yorkshire for most of my life while having stints in the Middle East while studying for my GCSEs. I like to think of myself who is somewhat confident, yet the idea of doing this speech definitely scares the hell out of me, so much so that procrastination was very tempting while writing it. My friend said to me, say a joke, lighten the mood, though I hardly think this is going to help. So. When applying for this position, I was somewhat confused, which admittedly doesn't take much. We only get to put three policies down. And I feel that such a role as Honorary Secretary can't be limited to just such three policies. So the policies that I'm saying today are my most important ones, but they are only a small, a small fraction of my ambition for this great institution. Now, I could come here and say that we are at a crossroads, but we're not. I could say that now is the time for real change, but it's not. 
I strongly believe that I'm in agreement with everyone here that our current Honorary Secretary, Ian, has done a great job over the last two years, and I really do wish him well for, vote for his presidential campaign this year. So what am I here to say? I'm here to say my point of view, to get my voice heard on how things can be improved for the benefit of everyone in this room, the students. Now you can look at my history of involvement in the union and societies and you'll see that there isn't much. Yes, it is true I'm part of certain societies and groups and I do take part where time allows. But I've never felt strongly enough to dictate on how they should be run. But when it comes to a union, an organisation that affects every single student in this room and on all over the campus, then I am passionate. I'm getting involved and helping. And I know that such a role like Honorary Secretary is where I can base my dues of career upon. My opponent might say that I'm just not experienced enough, and I'll admit that may be the case, but I know that my connection with the students and their problems overrides any experience that I may or may not have. So what are my policies? My first one is quite simply to maintain the rigidity, the organisation and the tradition of this university. People in past elections have always been talking about getting the minutes of the SRC Council out quicker, getting the decisions that were made to the students quicker, and yes, this has been a hot debate in the past. However, I feel that the reason, the time it takes to get minutes out to students, there is a reason for it. So that the information that is given to students is clear and direct. For example, my current opponent believes that the exam timetable should come out earlier. However, we got our exam timetable two weeks ago. And I feel that, for the, considering the exams are in May, that is plenty of time for anyone to plan holidays or trips back home. So on this, it is vital for the good work that has been done before to be continued and built upon for the continuing success of this student union. My second policy, some will say, is quite far-fetched. And it is something that me and my friends have always encountered. And that is the financial aid that this university provides to its students. For many, including me, it has been a lifeline for many students. But it could be so much more to so many more. It has been a life... Oh, sorry. If it was made more accessible and easier to apply for, I feel that because we live in the 21st century, the application for financial aid could be made online, be made more user-friendly to the ordinary student. Money is something that is always a worry. It is something that I have worried about continuously, even up to this day. And so I know how much of a benefit this would be. My third and final policy is you. I was meant to attend a debate yesterday evening about how representative the union is to its students. However, unforeseen circumstances meant I was otherwise engaged. And I agree that even though the union is very much open to the student population, it can be better. And again, I bring this idea of the 21st century. We live in an online world. Everyone has Facebook. Everyone has Twitter. What was the first thing everyone does when they wake up? They probably check their Facebook. I check the BBC website. I check to see if Benitez has finally been sacked yet. And so I bring this idea forward that maybe, even though there are feedback cards and questionnaires and forums and... You can fill these out throughout the union and throughout campus. But why not make them online? Why not make feedback cards, forums and questionnaires online so that the executive of this establishment can improve the union according to the people that matter? So that's me, and those were my three main policies. Though, as stressed before, you cannot put such a role down to such three policies. But yet, it is not a turning point for us. It is not a time to make a U-turn on past decisions. The work that has been done before today has been great. And so today, I ask you not to vote for radical change. Don't vote for real change you can believe in. Don't vote for a new beginning. But vote for continuation, for constant improvement for the people that matter, the students. I'm going to end on a very cheesy slogan. I'm sure you've seen the posters. But don't let yourself get hustled, guys, and make the right choice. Thank you. That's very good. Kept to time as well. The, uh, the second candidate is uh, Zivko Cheliashkov. First of all, good evening, everyone. It, thank you for coming as well. Uh, it's really, really, really refreshing to see so many young people interested in student politics. I really believe that's the way forward. Uh, I'll start by introducing myself. Uh, my name is Zivko Cheliashkov, uh, as the chair already mentioned. I am originally from Bulgaria. I have been the president uh, of uh, the Diplomats at Dundee Society over the last year. Uh, previously, I have also been the vice president. Uh, I've been a member of uh, the Funding Council of DUSA this year. 
Uh, I've also participated in a number of projects in Dundee. Uh, for example, the Discover to Inspire one uh, started by the current VPSA, Anna Dimitrova. I have participated uh, as well in uh, Rag Week and other events of DUSA, helped out uh, as a volunteer. And uh, I have considerable experience uh, in uh, relations with uh, local NGOs as well, uh, such as uh, the United Nations Association Scotland. I would continue by saying uh, a few things about my policies. My first policy, as my opponent already mentioned, uh, is uh, regarding exam dates and exam results. Currently, uh, exam dates are, have been announced two weeks ago. Uh, my opponent has been right in saying that. However, that has been only the case due to considerable, the considerable campaign that has been going on for over the past year in the SRC. Uh, several SRC members uh, have uh, uh, introduced motions to the floor and have pushed in order for the university uh, to disclose exam dates earlier. Uh, furthermore, I do believe that if we disclose exam dates at, in the beginning of the semester, that would be uh, very much uh, inconvenience of international students especially. Uh, in regards to exam results, uh, Ian McKinnon uh, has done a great job uh, regarding that uh, since we, yeah, a clap is in order. Uh, since, we, since, we, since we actually uh, didn't get uh, problems with e-vision this semester. However, I do believe that there is uh, still uh, a way to improve since uh, we're not certain that will be the case in next semester as well. Uh, previously, over the past three years, there have been a number of issues. Students haven't been able to see their exam results, which is uh, completely ludicrous. Um, my, second, uh, my second policy is to require and to provide more transparency. Now, I know what you're thinking, that's what all politicians say. Well, maybe not all, except, for example, Berlusconi or uh, Hugo Chavez. Uh, but still, uh, I do believe that I have some uh, concrete strategies in order to improve the transparency, especially in regards to SRC. I do want to create a list of all SRC members and to put it online with their contact details so that students actually know who is representing them. Uh, Ian McKinnon has already done a lot in regards to that, but I believe that by utilizing the, peop the, uh, the capabilities of the people sitting over there of use and media, we can actually improve the perception of the SRC. We all see those monitors over there. Instead of showing just commercial uh, uh, commercial events uh, and nights uh, in the Union, we could also show some information in regards to the motions currently going on in the SRC or, for example, as well, uh, in regards to AGM uh, that happened just a few days ago, of which we haven't heard much uh, uh, by just the media or at the monitors. Uh, I do believe that if we do that, uh, students will actually cross the border uh, uh, over apathy and will start to become more engaged uh, with the union. My third policy uh, is uh, very much uh, coming from the view of a third year law student, me, myself, uh, and it is uh, that uh, we need more contact hours. Five hours a week that I currently have is just ridiculous. I don't understand the concept of independent study. I do understand that we have to pursue more uh, ourselves. However, uh, all College of Arts and uh, social, uh, uh, social Sciences students currently are in disadvantage in regards to this since they do get just a couple of hours per week, which is just not enough in order to have a successful and uh, productive relationship with your uh, supervisors, tutors, and so on. Uh, I do believe that we, if we keep pushing forward, uh, and we make our demands clear to the university, we might actually uh, get some success. If I get elected, the student body uh, will also be informed regarding the current issues. For example, raising the tuition fees uh, by the university and the budget cuts. We need uh, more, more information in regards to that in, uh, out there. All of my policies uh, are part of uh, the ONSEC uh, mandate. Furthermore, uh, I do believe still that uh, my main job is uh, to be uh, the chair of the disciplinary panel. My opponent didn't mention anything in regards to that. The disciplinary panel is the one that punishes students in, uh, that have committed offenses uh, in Mono and in other locations throughout the Union. Uh, 
I do believe that uh, students need to be uh, become more aware of the consequences their actions might uh, uh, might uh, result in, especially having in mind that uh, uh, only very serious cases uh, reach the university. Most students do not know that if they're uh, called to the disciplinary panel, uh, they don't act, that that doesn't reflect their university record. Many students are worried about that. I'm not saying that all students should now go and uh, break the rules, uh, beat, get drunk and beat up uh, every single uh, person uh, opposite them. However, I still do believe that they need to be aware of that fact. Uh, I think that if we uh, introduce uh, the, all of those regulations, all of uh, useless regulations during the Freshers' Fair in a simple format, uh, for example, by giving out a leaflet to each attendant, that would actually make a difference so that people know what they have to, the, the rules they have to obey. Um, in, uh, in regards uh, to that, I do believe that uh, students should be given uh, a better chance at uh, involving themselves with the union. Apathy is, is out there. As we have uh, heard yesterday during the great uh, debate organized by the debating union, apathy is the main problem with the student body today. I have some concrete steps that aim at uh, improving the situation and if I get elected, I will implement them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. Um, I'll, I have a couple of questions which I'd like to ask both candidates, and we'll start off with uh, start off on the right hand side. Um, Zhivko mentioned the importance of the honorary secretary's position in terms of discipline in the students' association, um, and that is a, an essential part of it. I'd like to know what you feel the um, strengths and weaknesses are of the current disciplinary bylaws and what you might be thinking of doing about it. Tim? Um, well, um, coming from someone, like I said in my speech, um, someone who's not particularly been involved in sort of societies like that, I've not particularly ever seen the rules and regulations of, the dis of your, what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do within the union. So I think my opponent was very right in saying that the rules and regulations of the union behaviour should be more set out and more coherent towards every single student so they know what they're doing. Okay. Jivko, you got any comment? Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, the rules are already coherent. They are very good. People do get uh, punished. The current system works. It's not the problem that uh, of the system. It's just that people are unaware of the of the possibilities the system gives. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, there's a sense in which um, the honorary secretary's post is quite difficult because it carries on from one year to the next. Invariably, the honorary secretaries are very good. Um, we've had an extremely good one this past year. What will you do, Zhivko, to avoid just treading water and just following on? What's going to be new and different and exciting? Well, uh, as I already mentioned, uh, Ian has really done a great job, I agree. However, uh, we could do more in regards to informing the student body. If, for example, we have news on those monitors over there, as I mentioned earlier, uh, regarding current SRC motions, regarding what the disciplinary decisions have been, uh, I'm not saying that we should disclose uh, uh, all information coming from the disciplinary council. However, uh, for example, uh, the disciplinary decisions that uh, we can't uh, put uh, posters uh, using uh, uh, pots in trees, uh, should the students should uh, become aware of that fact. Thank you very much. Tim? Um, well, as, you, as he said, and as I agree, Ian has done a great job. And as I said in my initial statement, um, we should build upon this success and make minor improvements to what the students want. Um, I think it's hard to say um, concrete plans, what my concrete plans are, because at the same time, it's what the students would decide. And that's why I bring the idea of online forums and questionnaires on the ways that they should, be, that way they feel like the way it can be improved. Could I ask a specific question about I improved contact hours? or longer or more contact hours. How realistic do you think that is as, a, as, a, as an option? And assuming you do it, well, obviously you think it's realistic, but um, 
How would you actually go about starting such a process? I do realize that this is really a long shot. I do realize that we live in time of austerity, that there are considerable budget cuts, especially in relation to the university's budget. However, I do think that, uh, the, that the university should not discriminate uh, students uh, based on their subjects. Currently, uh, all of uh, the students in my level have just a couple of contact hours per week. That's just ridiculous, having in mind that other students have uh, that at, at, at least that much per day. There should be some kind of balance, and I believe that if we push in that direction, I'm not talking about quadrupling the number of contact hours, I'm just uh, talking about the commitment made by the university so that we can see a gradual increase uh, in time. Thank you. Do you have a view on that, Tim? I do agree that contact hours, and for someone who's actually paying for this university, um, I do feel like it, there should be more. Um, however, I also feel that the contact hours I get with my personal tutors from each subject, they make themselves available as much as possible, so I feel like it is made up through that after the lectures. I think my, I'm only a second year, so I'm not in a position of, as you, as in within a third year, so I can't particularly comment in that regard, but as a second year, I would say I'm somewhat satisfied with the way of my contact hours are, especially on lectures and tutorials and personal meetings with each of my tutors and so on. Okay, thank you. Um, is there anything you'd like to ask each other before I move on to potential questions from the floor? Or are you going to be terribly polite? I have a question for my opponent. Uh, I, I do hope that uh, you don't take this personally, however, uh, I still do believe that uh, you didn't really have anything concrete in your uh, policies. Uh, may I just quote uh, something from your uh, uh, statement, candidate statement? Mm -hmm. uh, I will be a great, uh, it will be a great starting position for me to get uh, to know the ins and outs of the union and how the cogs go around. It will provide me with a stable foundation to build my future career on. Do you really, s do you really understand the Honorary Secretary's position, what does it mean, uh, what the Honorary Secretary's responsibilities are, or is this uh, just another bullet point uh, uh, on your CV? Not you? at all, not at all. Um, as I said before, you are right to say that I am not as experienced as you are. You've been on loads of things like MUN and EUM and stuff like that. Um, but I feel, and I do understand what the role of Honorary Secretary does entail with the Disciplinary Committee and the SRC. And I feel that, yes, it is, a, for me, the role of Honorary Secretary is something that I can grapple, learn quickly and improve in a way that I, could, I would see it can be improved. I don't feel like I don't know anything about it at it at all and I think that would be a wrong statement. Okay, thanks very much. You've got any observations you'd like no. to make about Shifko's statement? No. Any questions from the floor? Na name please first. What traditions are worth preserving? Well, for example, the new tradition of the Rag Week, which I thought was great. Um, you've got certain events like the um, societies having events within the union. You've got the psychology event. You've got the, like, when they have a night here. Or you've got the, um, I think it's the, uh, the, the sorority nights and stuff like that. I think the traditions like that of each bigger society being able to preserve themselves in, with having nights out and having events within the union is very important. Anybody else? Oh, there's one over there, yeah. Um, I have a question for Jiffco. Um, my name is Laura. Um, I have a question for Jiffco. In your speech, you mentioned the fact that you want the SRC's members' names to be online and contact details. And you also mentioned that the exam time table this year are out earlier because of action that's already happening. And um, apparently, the SRC has already decided that it's going to have a video that will be on monitors. There are Facebook groups and information online. So, two of the main things you mentioned in your speech are already happening. What new actions do you plan to bring to what has already happened? Thank you very much for this question. Uh, first of all, I do realize that uh, some of the things I talked about are already happening. Uh, my campaign involves uh, supporting those actions. Uh, however, I do believe that there are some other uh, means that we can utilize in order to increase the, uh, the perception of the SRC uh, in general. For example, uh, even by sending out a mass email to all students uh, uh, after each SRC, after each SRC's three weeks period, uh, would make a difference actually, uh, since people would uh, become aware of what has been discussed at the SRC. Furthermore, I do believe that 
uh, even if we just use uh, the Facebook, the general Facebook of user, that would make a difference. Currently, uh, the SRC does have a uh, Facebook group. However, there are just a couple of hundred people in the it. I do think that uh, if we use the means that we already have, that would make a difference in regards to the students' apathy that we actually see even tonight. Thank you. Anybody else? Oh, there's somebody right at the far distant back. I do believe that, uh, thank you again for this question, I do believe that uh, if we uh, uh, disclose the exam dates period uh, at least, at, at most, uh, sorry, uh, two weeks after the beginning of uh, each semester, that would make a difference, especially in relation to international students. Many of us, even tonight, are international students. We have to book flights months in advance in order to get good deals. Uh, if we do that, that would, have, that would make a considerable difference in regards to the student budget. And I think that it is possible to do that since uh, even though they have to book rooms, even though they have to uh, make special arrangements, most modules uh, and the, the people that are taking them are clear two weeks after the beginning of each semester. So I do think that is possible. Thank you. Okay. Uh, is there anything else? or oh, Somebody over in the corner. Thank you for this question. Uh, as I mentioned, I think that giving out leaflets at the Freshers' Fair would be the best thing to start with. Uh, I do have a concrete plan to proceed with spreading the word around for special uh, display decisions that uh, actually have a reflection on the whole student body. As I mentioned, for example, putting pins in trees is not allowed. Since that kills trees, we might have actually killed a few trees during the last, past ge the last few years. Uh, we need to make the student body aware of that. And I think that if we actually do that, that would uh, make uh, students uh, more engaged since they would realize the potential uh, that the disciplinary panel offers. Thank you. Sorry about that, that was my phone. And I'm notorious for having absolutely no connections whatsoever to any technology. Um, and I certainly don't look at Facebook first thing in the morning. <laughs> As you might have guessed. Um, I think that's a fair crack of the whip for these two. You've got a couple of good candidates here. Um, and I look forward to the voting. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Now, our, um, our next position is the... Uh, Vice President Student Welfare. And as we've only got one candidate, we'd better make sure we give her a fairly hard time. So, um, Katie, where are you? Katie Jowett? and the exec have been so helpful and all I want to do is be able to offer every student the same help that I've had in return. But the only way I can do this is if I'm elected and so therefore one 
please vote for me. <laughs> and two, you can only do that with a decent exec. So this is the things that I hope to bring to the role. I hope that I'll be able to work with the, my fellow contenders, and I also hope that I can work with the sports union to bring about a week to do with a healthy mind and a healthy body, because th being healthy is not just about your university life, but it also affects your social life. To do this, as I said, I hope to work with the um, sports union. I know they offer quite a lot of on-campus and off-campus sports that are not just for whether you're in a team or a club, but they also do things like give it a go and they also do fun days where you can come and have a go at, say, the Paralympics and see if you can do rugby in a wheelchair. I also hope to work with the student services, which are very important in this role. They have many different ways to help you, whether it's to give out free condoms or get a STI test, which I know Sarah's helped to implement a lot this, this semester and last semester, but they also help if you just need a gen general friendly chat. So, as I said, that was nice, short and sweet. So all I can say is please vote for me. If you don't, I won't be too offended, but <laughs> This is your university, so please take responsibility and at least vote, because these are really important elections. So, thank you. I suppose what I should have said when, before, um, before Katie got up was, of course, that she does have an opponent, and that's Ron. Um, you know the, the, uh, the completely non-existent candidate that you can vote for if you can't stand the, the single candidate who's, who's put themselves up. So you could vote for Ron, but hopefully you won't. Okay, Katie, a couple of questions. Um, I have a sense that um, previous VP SW hasn't really worked. The, the, the campaigns have been DUSA focused you seem to be particularly interested in the relationship between DUSA and student services. Could you expand on that a bit and explain how you're going to be different from previous incumbents? Um, well, I think that Amy Waldron, when she was exec, um, Tom Dale and Sarah have done an excellent job at being SWs and they've brought a lot to the role, which I hope I'll be able to continue. <coughs> but um, I would quite like to work with not just the student services on campus but also um, the ones that are out of campus and can help just in general. I'd, As I mentioned I'd quite like to do healthy mind, healthy body which is a lot of things whether it's eating well so I can use the nurses. Nine Wells is a very important resource, resource that <laughs> we have so I'd like to work with them. But as I said as well, the sports, the sports union is brilliant. We have brilliant facilities. We have brilliant current exec. I'm, I'm afraid I don't quite know the new ones. So hopefully they'll be just as brilliant. So I'd just like to make it more of a family business rather than just one person working with the little resources that DUSA has. We can use everything the university has. So I'd quite like to do that. Can I ask a supplementary then? Um, how do you see your role vis-a-vis -vis the Vice President Communications and Campaigns? Um, well, I'd quite like to work very closely with them. I know exec in the past, um, with previous positions when it wasn't quite the campaigns one, they've worked well together and I only hope that we'll be able to work together to make our own campaigns a lot more effective and also campaigns that we've probably not even thought about at the minute while we're running. So I hope we can do a lot of campaigns just to get the students involved and help out. Okay. And just one more that comes from my old experiences in, the, in this university over a lot of years. I always thought it was quite difficult for students to find people to talk to, particularly about sensitive matters. Now, it's one thing doing it with a grey-haired, withered ancient how does it work with somebody who's about the same age talking about sensitive issues? 
Um, I know that stu I know that I've previously had in the past where you don't really want to talk to someone who's the same age or younger. Maybe you might feel that they don't really fully understand your problem. Maybe they're too young to have that on their shoulders. But at the same time, they don't have to be the one you put your faith into and talk to. They can just be a focus point where they can then direct you to the right person. And I hope that I'll be able to do that, especially with such great resources. Um, I can't even think of the word, as um, resources like DUSA have. I think Nightline is one brilliant way of doing that, and the previous exec have brought that in. And the, whether it's an old person, whether it's someone your age, or whether it's a complete stranger, it's still someone there to talk to. Okay, thanks very much. Questions from the floor? A recent NUS uh, survey put the statistics of uh, rape and sexual assault occurring to one in seven women on British university campuses. In these cases, it was more likely to be uh, somebody known to the victim and also more likely to be somebody from the same institution. So my question is, do you have any campaigns to raise awareness of this m amongst all students, not just gendered? And if you don't know, this has been brought to your attention. Is that something you'd be looking more into in your campaign? Um, I actually was made aware of that fact at the AGM on um, Tuesday night that that is apparently in the st statistics. I had no idea that that was about, but this really interests me and I hope to work with the um, VPCC on bringing about awareness of how, sa how safe you need to be on campus and in general. And I think it's only fair that everyone should feel safe, so I do hope to bring something in and unfortunately, because I was only made aware on Tuesday, I've not quite had time to prepare one, but I'll definitely hope to work on it in the future. Correct answer. <laughs> um, just have a quick follow-up to that as well. Um, it's really important to talk to, because these crimes are gendered, it's really important to talk to women about how to keep safe, but is this something you'd be, you'd be looking into to talk to all students about what's appropriate behaviour and what's inappropriate behaviour? Um, for example, I want to give an example of, like, being groped at the union, that happens a lot, it happens a lot to me and it happens a lot to my friends. Do you have any ideas of how we can talk about more appropriate behaviour to everybody, not just one group of students? Well I think as a student, it's your responsibility at the same time to watch how you act. You wouldn't go into a profession such as the police or any profession and act irresponsibly in your workplace, so why should you in your university life? Um, Obviously, it's not just women who get groped as well. Like exactly. Men, men, I'm sure, get very drunk, say, when they're out on a Wednesday night and can't remember anything the next mm -hmm. day. So I think having talks, people about, people, a presence for people to talk to, and also the campaigns with the other exec members is a brilliant way to get out on how safe you should be and how respectful you should be to others. Another correct answer. Good luck with the campaign. Thank you. Are there any others for Katie? No? Well, in that case, I think you've got another good candidate. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, let's move on. Um, VP, VP engagement. Uh, Stefan Tomoff, first, please. Hello, my name is Stefan Tomoff, and I come from Bulgaria. First of all, I'd like to present myself as what I'm doing here in the university. I'm a member of the Student Representative Council and I'm doing the position of counselor without portfolio. I am an active member of the Diplomats of Dundee Society, taking the position of treasurer and I'm also taking an executive position in the Dundee University Volleyball Club as well. In the past, I was also president of the Bulgarian Society, which uh, last year I found and I'm happy to say this year the society is taking great role again on campus and I don't have time for them but they're doing a splendid job. If anyone is here I would like to congratulate them on that. But that's enough about me. I would like to continue with my policies at the current moment. First one is my policy on bringing exam timetables uh, as early as possible. This is the issue that I've been pursuing throughout the whole year in the SRC. I've proposed two motions on how this the issue is going to be solved. However, this is only a short-term uh, pr proposition, I would like to make it a long-term one and I believe that the role of the Vice President of Engagement will make sure that the process will be followed. Uh, as you all know, the exam timetables were, uh, were announced last week 
and this was due to the process that I was doing. However, I believe it could have been done one week earlier and the grand rehearsal for me would be the next semester where it's going to be the harder task of bringing the exam timetables as early as possible before the Christmas break, which is the harder one to make according to the person who is making the timetables, that's Dr. David Russell. My second policy is to make the union a place that is not only a club or a bar. It has a great potential. How I decided to turn into this idea was last year when I went to visit a friend of mine in the University of Sheffield. The University of Sheffield's union is rated number one in the, uh, in the United Kingdom and I was really uh, eager to learn why their union is better than ours. First of all, their venue is bigger than ours and can host many more activities. We cannot compete with that, but what we can compete is with their spirit. What I observed on the day was that they had a place where people can actually sit down throughout the day without needing to order food or order drinks in the bars. I would like to have a space in our union where people can actually sit down and have a normal conversation without needing to buy a drink. Also, I would like to bring more people that don't need to drink at all any alcohol. And I would like to do that with various activities like movie screenings or with uh, informal debates where people can actually participate in their knowledge and not only just share a pint. My last policy is that I would like to uh, make aware of all the student-led initiatives that are happening around the campus. Uh, last year, I was one of the people who organized the Discover to Inspire conference, and unfortunately, not many people have heard about it at all. There were also last year, in December, there were lots of fourth-year psychology students that made uh, an event for themselves for which they were seeking uh, attention so that they, they can get people to do their experiments so that they can have uh, a good representation for their dissertations. I would like to make this event bigger next year. Also, I would like to encourage students to participate in as many uh, opportunities as possible that are being offered in the university. And I'll be happy to be contacted by anyone and then use all the resources of DUSA to say uh, about the conference the conferences and all the initiatives that they're doing. I would also like to continue on all the good policies that Andrew has been doing throughout the year. First of all, I'd like to congratulate him on having over 120 people at the AGM just two days ago, which was the first time the quorum was met at the AGM. Also, he's been doing a really good job on helping the deputy president on organizing the elections in September and also the VPSA for organizing RAG Week. If I get elected for VP, you can expect the same thing from me. As some of you know, I'm involved in, so many, uh, in several other societies, including the Enterprise Gym. I'm part of the management team this year. And I've been doing a lot more than the eight hours per week that I get paid for. Thank you very much. And our second candidate is Kaylee Watson. Kaylee. Good evening, everyone. Um, firstly, I'm really nervous, so just bear with me. Um, my name is Kaylee Watson, and um, I'd like to be your Vice President of Engagement. Uh, I'm a first-year Forensic Anthropology student, and also currently your first-year Learning and Teaching Rep on the SRC. Um, I'm a very determined, hard-working, and passionate person, um, and I have a heart and a mind for people. Uh, before deciding to come to Dundee to study as a mature student, I was actually an emergency medical dispatcher for the ambulance service in the east of England. Um, I thrived in this role. Um, it was very challenging, but I think my, um, it really showed off my abilities, um, natural abilities of, of leadership, management, efficiency and organisation, um, obviously as well as the critical roles of, of empathy and, and compassion, which I required. Um, my policies. Um, I think my policies and goals are an extension of, of who I am um, and who I feel DUSA can embody and can be for the student population. They centre around making sure every individual gets the most out of the University of Dundee experience and no person feels unsupported. Um, my policies are um, a friendly face, uh, to improve the experience at the individual level by helping DUSA be more personable, open and accessible to all students. 
I tend to do this by being and promoting an active presence on campus, being approachable and really showing that DUSA can care about every student. Um, as an executive member, um, I'll look to expand and enhance on my current project that I've got running with the SRC, which includes some of the things that our other candidates have, have said they'd like to see for the future, um, such as uh, video podcasts of the SRC members and their roles shown on the, on the TV screens here, um, sending out regular emails from the SRC to make people aware of what's going on, um, and also just general information so everyone is aware who their representatives are. Uh, that's something I'd like to, to use and go forward with as an executive member. I'll look to implement schemes and work actively with students instead of passively for students. Um, increasing not only the recognition but to help combat some stu student apathy which is, is present on campus. My second policy is about engaging and reacting. Uh, in listening to student feedback and encourage personal positive progress both academically as well as socially. I believe every voice matters and I will actively listen and respond to varying opinions of, of students. Um, taking this feedback, I will champion the needs and requirements of the whole student community, not just those here on a Saturday night, uh, and, and use my position on the exec to do that. And that leads into my, to my third policy, which is supporting each other, ensuring that students in need are aware of the services and facilities available at DUSA. I understand that regardless of personal circumstances or stage of university career, each new semester can bring unique experiences and challenges. Uh, we are a team and no one should have to face these issues alone. DUSA isn't always just about a night out. We have many innovative schemes and societies to help all students when they need vital support or advice. I shall build on the work of the cam and campaigning of the previous executive team and work closely with the VPCC and student services to promote and enhance these crucial facilities, bringing them to the forefront and making sure no one goes without the support and guidance that they want or need. Um, and I'd just like to conclude by saying that I pride myself on being fun, friendly and an approachable person and I hope that people who know me that are here would, would agree with those qualities. And as a mature student and a current member of the SRC, I am naturally driven and very focused on the importance of communication. It has been my aim to assist those seeking help and increase awareness of student representation. And so far, um, as a first year's representative, I've had the opportunity to implement structures to aid academic improvement, personal development, and offered support in all areas that DUSA has to offer. If given the opportunity to be your VP, I'll be able to expand on my previous experiences and continuously strive to enhance the personal student experience for all. Thank you. Okay, a couple of questions from me. Um, over the years, uh, a lot of students have said to me, ah, SRC, exec, ah, don't know what they do, not interested, they're irrelevant, they're disengaged from the rest of the student body. If that is a genuine view, what would you do about mm -hmm. it? Thank you very much. As I said, one of my policies is to promote all the student-led initiatives around the campus. And the SRC is indeed uh, uh, one of the large student-led initiatives. The only ones who are not studying at the moment in the SRC are the four uh, sabbatical members and the rector's assessor. The way I would like to promote it, to make sure that people understand the seriousness is to show the motions and actually show the implementation. For example, two years ago it was voted on the extension of the library hours and the way people can understand is showing how much, uh, how, how bad it was before that and how much this policy has helped. Bless you. <laughs> has, has helped on that. I would also would like to show, hopefully, that uh, the exam timetable motion that I've passed will beat up the nine weeks uh, announcement that was happening in the first semester of uh, la la this year. If it gets beaten by three weeks, which is my aim, which would be a sign that the SRC is working and the executive is working as well. Thank you. Um, yeah, you know, I, I understand as an SRC member at the moment that um, there needs to be more clarity. Um, and that's reflected if anyone's taken the chance to read the minute, minutes. Um, there are occasions where the, the main focuses of, of student, um, or what students are looking for, is not something that we're bringing to the SRC because people aren't aware we are there. 
which was the aim of my campaign before um, coming here and also something I'd like to take forward into the exec, is, is really making sure the students are aware that the SRC is there, what they can do for us, and, and, and like my opponent says, is show the change, show things happening and, and reacting to what people are asking for. Um, and I think once people start to see that, that the SRC is a powerful body uh, within and, and has influence on the, on the exec and the university, then they'll start to get more involved and, um, and want to be a more active member. I, I'd like to follow that up by um, making a comment about one of the interesting things about Dundee University is that it, it, it covers all the bases from aardvarks to zebras we do a bit of almost everything. Does that level of diversity cause a problem for whoever's in charge of student engagement? Certainly not for me. As I say, um, as, a, as a slightly more mature student, I've, I've had the opportunity to, um, to travel, to be educated in, in other countries, to, to meet every walk of life in, in my previous career. And, and I think diversity only adds to the university experience. Um, instead of hinders it and, and I relish the opportunity to work with so many different people with so many different opinions and bring those opinions together and, and, and show that to the exec. Thomas? Stefan, by the way. Sorry. Absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> just, a, just a sign of the elderly, you see. <laughs> At the current moment, I'm working with the Enterprise Gym and our aim is to try to promote uh, something that's connected uh, strictly to business, to students all around the university and we've been actually very successful on promoting it to life science, medicine and people from engineering which I was kind of surprised at the beginning of the year as well. So this job learned, teach, uh, taught me how to deal with uh, people who might not be interested in entrepreneurship for example and I can apply the skills that I learned there in trying to engage more people in various activities around the union. The key is to find what they want and then find a way how to approach them. I suppose engagement, everybody's commented on the importance of communication. I'm not sure I'm clear what it is that you're going to communicate. Well, everything is the, is the main goal. You know, everything between what the students want, what the students feel they need, and what the executive and DUSA have to offer. Um, I think it's important to have the transparency so that the students know what is going on in their union and what is going on with their executive team and in the same way that the executive team get a fuller idea and full picture of what the entire student body are looking for from their union. Thank you. What I'm going to communicate to the students is what they uh, want, that's actual results from the executive and I believe we can show that through the SRC minutes and also we can have lots of questions towards them, what do you want to see, how would you like to see that and I believe I can do that. My email will always be uh, open to all students and I'll make sure that it will be very easily accessible. Thank you. Okay, thanks very much. Before we move to questions from the floor, let's see how, let's see how these two can be polite to each other or not. Anything that you would like to say to each other? Questions you'd like to give one to the other? You said that uh, one of the ways you want to contact students is through emails, through mass emails. As I already said I'm working with the Enterprise Gym. I've noticed that people consider that a spam. How would you make sure that students will not feel another, the emails coming from the union are not going to be one more spam as the weekly advertisements for Sin City? Um, well, I don't wish to do them too regularly. It's something I'm looking at implementing um, for the SRC anyway for every two meetings so that if they wish to view online, they can view the motions every meeting. But it's something that would only happen every six weeks. Um, something I think that is important to the people that want to read it. Um, as part of that communication, I was also looking to do information in, in school offices um, and um, on, S on, on Facebook pages, which do need developing. Um, and I think those lines of communication would reach the most students. Um, Stefan? Um, now you said you, you're an active member in, uh, or have been an active member in societies and, and on the executive of those, as, as well as I know you're involved in the enterprise gym. Um, are those things that you plan on giving up to focus on your VPE role? 
Yes, I've actually had conversation with uh, one of my bosses in the enterprise gym and I told him if I get elected for the vice president of engagement, I'm going to drop the enterprise gym project just because I won't have the time. This year, I barely have the time to manage that. Actually, my girlfriend is the person who probably suffers a lot from that. And I promise next year, if I get elected for vice president of engagement, I will mostly concentrate on just executive. And just one more thing. I would like to apologize to Daria for not sharing as much time with her <laughs> as possible. I think this is getting too nice. <laughs> We're nice people. Um, anything from the floor? Uh, Mr. Jardine? Yeah, um, as the current vice president of engagement, I want to ask you, um, oh, sorry, the mic. Um, basically, this is a really, really new role. Um, I'm the first person in it. And I've not had great success in engaging students at times. What do you think has been my biggest failure this year, and how do you propose to tackle it? <clears throat> For biggest failure, maybe it was explanation of the role exactly. That was probably the only failure that I can see. As I told you, I really congratulate you on the bringing of uh, people to the AGM. 120 people compared to the seven last year, that's a great percentage increase. Uh, yeah, just to echo what Stefan says, on, on your, your biggest problem is the fact that there was, there's no one, you had no predecessor to, to make you aware and, and from the conversations I've had with you and things I'm aware that, that you've done in your role, um, I can take that information and expand on that and, and really bring it into its own. Okay, anybody else? Um, there was somebody in the middle there who was first, I think. Thank you. Hi, sorry, this is a question for Stefan. Uh, you mentioned Sheffield in your comparisons. Um, I believe Sheffield at the moment actually receive millions in their funding from bursaries from their university. Um, compared to Dundee, who receive, I think it's under 800,000 at the moment. How would you propose mm -hmm. improving services at Dundee, um, considering that we already do quite a good job, considering the debt we have and uh, the lack of funding from the university? Thank you very much. I'm quite aware with the situation in Sheffield and I said in my speech I'm not aiming of uh, uh, um, making up for their big venue and also for another building that they're building themselves for their union. I'm trying to aim at increasing the spirit in our university and I said that I would like to have movie screenings which shouldn't be that big of a cost for the university and the other is informal debates which can be even held here in uh, the air bar where people can actually sit down in one of the booths and talk about the recent developments in certain politics, for example, or new technological challenges to happening. Any more? Uh, gentleman with a <coughs> flowery shirt. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we keep talking about Can Dundee University. First, it's, uh, my name is Francis Nicholson. I'm the president of nursing um, at Dundee Uni at the moment. Thank you. Um, we keep talking about Dundee University and Dundee students. I would just like to take this opportunity to remind you that Dundee University is not solely based in Dundee. We hold campuses and have students a lot further away. And I'll take the nurses in Kirkcaldy as an example. How do you plan to engage with those who are a lot further away um, that you might not be able to do face to face? Um, as you have mentioned, this role is about engaging with the entire student body. <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, certainly. Um, and that's something that I've, I've tried to take into consideration when I was looking at the SRC information, was that, um, like we heard one of the contestants say earlier, we live in, a, in an age of social media. And I think that Informe should, should be the first, um, our, our first outlet, our first way to communicate with those type of students. But I also think it's incredibly important to engage in face-to-face. To, to show that these students that I will have an active presence on campus and not just this campus but every campus uh, and, and so that people know who I am and know that, that I am accessible and, and people can come to me as a VPE with, with any worries they may have. Stefan. Thank you. Well Francis, the first thing we need to do is to understand what the people in Kirkcaldy want in order to bring them here in Dundee. So I would actually try to do a survey, what exactly what they want to see in the union, and then try to implement. Because very easily, I would try to make an event for people studying nursing. However, since I'm not, uh, I don't know, probably you're the only one who 
I know uh, who studies this degree, I would actually try to understand what uh, the people in the student body want, and then I'll try to invite them here through a very interactive way. For example, as I said, either a movie screening or a debate that might be really interested for them. And still, I would like to keep it in a more informal way, not only through the debating union. Thank you. Any others? Lady here. Um, my name's Laura. I have a question for Stefan. You mentioned you want events that aren't just drinking. You obviously mentioned movie screenings and you said you don't think it's that expensive. Which one? Um, you mentioned the fact you wanted to have movie screenings and you said they wouldn't be that expensive but the union has done them in the past and they are quite expensive. You have to pay for the copyright of the movie, you have to pay for the staff, you have to pay the running of the building. And similar with other, they have done comedy nights, they have done, I can't think, there's other examples of non-drinking nights they've done and because they're more expensive and they pay for the staff costs but they're not making money. So what is your plan? What new ideas do you have to get students who traditionally aren't going to come to the events that are non-drinking that you have already? What new events are you going to try and get people to come to? Thank you, Laura. So last year, the, last, uh, the previous School of Humanities president organized an event to, uh, to um, memorate, let's say, it called the Year of Revolutions, where there were screenings of the Al Jazeera videos and other tech talks about the revolutions that were happening in the Arab world. So movie screenings cannot be only about uh, actual uh, blockbusters happening in the world. We would like to have m actual events and we can use videos that can be used for free. Actually, those things can be used and that wouldn't be that much of an expense. Of course, I would like to investigate how much a movie screening can, be, can cost to the union. Since Tuesday, I'm aware now with uh, what is the financial situation of DUSA, if uh, I was more aware of that before writing my campaign, I could have uh, not made it so pompous, let's say like that. But definitely, I would try to fit down according to the budget of DUSA, and I'll try to find the most uh, minimizing costs to do such interactive events. Thank you. So, lady, right at the back. Okay, um, you've actually mentioned several times that you would encourage things like weekly debates. We actually have weekly mm -hmm. debates that happen every single Wednesday across in that room. Since this is already going on, would you put forward some sort of extra support since you think this is so important? As we do have been doing this for as long as I've been here, and this is my fourth year. So would you be giving us extra support since you think this is important? Or is this just another kind of buzzword to throw out at us, which happens quite a lot? Of course, I would like, uh, last night was the first time I actually came to your debates and I really liked the style and how actually it was organized. Well, one of the things why I think maybe you don't have the attendance that you expect is that you're doing on a Wednesday night when most people are doing sports and they're actually preparing for a night out after that. So I would advise you to change it to a different date where people can be more able to come to that. And I'll be really, help, uh, really happy to help uh, promote the event, of course. Chap at the bar. If you are appointed, Stefan, I wonder how Daria would feel about you having even less time to spend with her. <laughs> <coughs> I'm not sure he'd even, he should even make an attempt to answer that. <laughs> oh, there's one more over here. So if you're running about with that microphone, one over there. Uh, hi there. Um, you've both spoken about the importance of using social media, like Facebook, etc., to get your message across. I think you're failing to notice that social media doesn't work. It, it isn't working. If it worked, these, this room would be packed. P like, especially with Facebook these days, the stuff that Facebook filters out that never makes it to your newsfeed is unbelievable. Most of the stuff's automatically filtered out. The stuff that isn't, you can hide from yourself altogether. So why do you think that with a disenfranchised kind of student community, all of a sudden they're going to be engaged because you post a couple more statuses? And I think both of you said that was important. It obviously doesn't work. It was easy to get a seat here. Okay. <laughs> um, well, I would actually disagree with you. Um, I think that the, the concept of Facebook and social media is not a bad concept. It's not a bad idea. And it just needs in, to be implemented better. Our main uh, focus is actually student apathy. I'm sure many people saw it in their feed and thought, mm, seven o'clock, I'm going to the James Bond night later. I don't want to be out that early. But it, 
that's what we need to focus on, is being more communicative about what we do, that when people do see it in their feed, and when there is more promotion online, that they are more inclined to come along to these events and take an active role. And once we change the mindset of students here at Dundee about being active with their student council and exec team, then I think things like Facebook would be an excellent communication tool. But that's what you're already using. And this obviously is a huge percentage of the Dundee University student group. No. But that's <laughs> As okay. a community, this isn't much of us here. Yeah, and, and that's, that's what they're using already. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so, my no, my, sorry, my question was, what would you do to better? What would you do to make it better? What are you going to add to this other than Facebook? Well, as I said, I want to be an active presence on campus. I, I want to know that people know who I am so that when I go to them with these Facebook groups, they're not like, mm, what does this stand for? Who are these people? That they'll know, ah, oh, I spoke to this girl the other day, or I had a message from this girl, or she says something that's really interested me. I'd like to go onto that page and see what else there is to interest me. It's about getting people involved, and then things like this really will happen. And, and through my time here, that's what I want to do, is get involved with students personally. Let's let uh, Stefan have a go at that. What I would personally do is make sure that there is access to exec members to the DUSA Facebook page, because at the current moment, the DUSA Facebook page is just used for advertisement of uh, night outs, and it's not advertised, for example, for this event. If it was advertised, maybe people would have come here. Okay, there was somebody over here. Um, one of the great things that Andrew Jardine brought to the um, Excuse me, it's name, name Harrison. Name. Uh, sorry. Thank you. Uh, one of the great things that Andrew Jardine brought to the role was he did, uh, he did a monthly column in the university magazine and it was a great way of outreaching to students. I wondered if you would carry that on and if there was any other ideas that you would have for, sort of that con for continuing that idea but better in it, how would you advance that? Stefan, thank you very much. Uh, actually at the SRC, uh, which was the previous meeting, so three weeks ago, we discussed how we can make the SRC more popular, and I actually noted that uh, the column that Andrew is using in the Magdalene is very successful for promoting what the exec is doing, and that we need the same thing for the SRC to be done. What else, what, uh, what other thing that I would like to do is to make sure that there is a person who speaks also on the Discovery Radio and on Ducet TV, for example, in the weekly Ducet TV news, stating what has been done on the SRC or an exec update happening there as well. Hi. Um, yeah, it's a similar thing to say I'm also in the SRC and it's something that has been um, quite important to us over the last few meetings about increasing awareness. Andrew's column is, is brilliant and that's something we want to look to, to bring in for the SRC as well as the exec. But I personally was looking at, at doing videos and podcasts, just short clips of, of who the members are and what they can do and what they can offer you, which would be advertised both on the DUSA website and on the TVs in here. Juicer Media isn't really a vessel for the union. It's, it's a hobby, like people take part in it. So Juicer TV, to ask them to give time to stuff like that. Discover Radio, to give time to that, give their schedule to that. The Magdalene, to give pages to that, is a bit... What I was asking is, what, what will you do in your role? Like, not how will you use Juicer Media? Well, I'm personally ready to take 30 seconds or one minute in the weekly news stating what is the uh, weekly update of the executive. Yeah, and as I said, that my videos would not be something that I would be asking do some media to be involved in. It's something I want to do personally, and I think as, as VP of engagement, that is something that would be important to my role. Okay, one more, then it's time for me to have a fag. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, uh, my name is Finlay. Um, I was wondering if you have any plans for how you want to measure the engagement that you're actually having with students other than how much it costs uh, the union to run or how much money is made by it. Thank you, Finley. Well, one measure, it's very easy, it's numbers. If I manage to beat the next year's AGM, that will be a great involvement by my side. Also, if I manage to bring people to the events that I'm planning to organize, well, that will be a success for the job that I'm trying to take. It's going to sound a rather strange answer, but I want to get to the point where no student has to come to me asking for what they want. That, that do so already offer everything every student is looking for in one way or another, whether that be um, more non-drinking evenings, as, as Stefan suggested, or, or just more diversity in what we offer here. 
um, and just get involved with if the deputy president and the, the VPCC and and making sure that the campaigns that they're running this year really reflect what students are asking for. Okay, there's just one more from Rachel who's waving furiously at me and trying to stop me, <laughs> trying to stop me going and having a fag. Rachel? Don't worry, I want one too. Um, it was mentioned earlier on that the Union Facebook page doesn't actually advertise events like this. I actually have the Union Facebook page up and it is actually advertising this night in itself as the hustings, just for a point of information. There's no response to that. Uh, uh, no, like no, we will not have a response to that. Uh -huh. It was a useful point of information. Just one then. Yes. <laughs> okay. Right. Um, the next one and before I, had, I run off and have a cigarette, the next one was going to be the independent court member, but uh, Andrew's withdrawn his candidacy for that one. Um, so before we have a go at Andy Meekie and Douglas Schreiber, we'll make them suffer for 10 minutes while you get a drink at the bar and I go and have a quick fag. Is that okay? Cheers. Uh, to, the to the current district exec, the chairman, my fellow uh, candidates, and to most importantly, the prospective uh, voters for the University of Dundee. Um, my name is Douglas Schreiber, and I'm currently in my fourth and final year of a joint honours uh, degree programme in Geography and Environmental Science. Um, needless to say, I am currently uh, fairly nervous. I apologise for any shaking, any t uh, sort of uh, stuttering, and uh, I feel just now as though my innards are about to come my outwards. Um, <laughs> I am here, I'm here tonight to uh, convince you of why I am the right person uh, for the next year's role of uh, VPSA, the Vice President of Student Activities. Um, and I uh, then hope to answer your questions and queries you may have regarding my application for this position and those relevant areas uh, about my past involvement and current uh, and future plans for societies with regards to DUSA. Um, I was elected as a by the societal bo body, uh, the heads of all your societies, uh, as a uh, at the beginning of this year to become your voice for the SRC, to become your society representative. They believed in me. This position entails uh, being on the society funding panel where so far I've helped award roughly £16,000 to various deserving, hard-working societies that just need a small push in the right direction, a little bit of help to get them off the, the, the starting blocks. Um, I'm also a member of the disciplinary panel and I have leapt at the opportunity to attend these meetings and to find out exactly how the laws, rules and regulations with regards to DUSA as well as treating an individual count and how, how they uh, affect students when they uh, do bend the rules or break them as uh, the case may be. I'd like to point out that I've attended every single SRC meeting, um, I've attended every single uh, council, society council meeting and I've contributed fairly and in uh, my opinion unbiasedly to every single society's uh, funding council meeting, all bar one where uh, I, I couldn't unfortunately uh, make that one. In uh, my third year I became particularly active in helping the Geography and Environmental Science Society um, which I have now been uh, elected, well last year I was elected the president for this year. Um, at. Uh, I would like to take a moment to state some of the specifics about my role in, the, in my influence in this area. Since I was elected president, the membership of the society has nearly doubled. Uh, every major event we have held so far this year has increased in attendees. Uh, we've always had more people than last by at least 10 in every single event that we've held this year. We've been getting more and more people coming. Um, I would also like to say that I was uh, partially in, in uh, part of uh, managing a decent team that I've got in, in my committee responsible for holding DUSA's ever biggest, uh, sorry, busiest ever uh, student run night on a Thursday night here in Air Bar where we had more than 160 members of our society coming in for the pub quiz. Um, we raised considerable f funds for this which has helped to go towards our Geography Society Ball which uh, we will be glad to say is being paid for by tomorrow and we do not need any funding or any help because we've done all of our own funding work for this. Um, I think that this, given that uh, the election itself is on next Friday, uh, as well as the, the, the ball, as well as my dissertation due date being uh, effectively the Monday after, but it will be done by this Friday, I can handle the pressure and I can handle uh, sticking to a tight budget. Um, I have had to work with the current VPSA, the events management team, the technical team, not to mention the hardworking uh, bar staff behind DUSA, um, and uh, for all of these events, and I have good knowledge of how they function and how they work with themselves and how they work with uh, the members of DUSA. Um, due to my commitment uh, to the Geography and Environment Science Society, I have been awarded the title Honorary Committee Member on the Royal Scottish Geographical Society's Dundee branch. This was a position offered to me by the RSGS because I managed to increase the numbers of students attending their events greatly. 
Um, with regards to the RAG week, which we held in January, I helped host several events, working with Anna and a number of other, other SRC members. Um, I uh, sold a number of the uh, raffle tickets, uh, because I believe this is for an entirely worthwhile cause, and I've also recently applied to the current VPSA for a position on the newly forming RAG week committee. If you vote for me for your VPSA, um, firstly I will lobby for better uh, DUSA benefits for those societies affiliated with DUSA. Currently there are not enough societies attending these meetings. Um, by attending meetings themselves I can see that regularly we do not meet uh, the quorum simply because not enough societies are turning up. Whether this is down to student apathy, whether this is down to communication, I am yet to find out. I want to find out this is part of my, uh, my commitment to you. Um, I want to offer these benefits uh, to affiliated societies, not as a threat to those who don't take part, but more as an incentive for those who do take part, to take more part, to get the, them to get their students to come along and to get them to take an active role in what we have to do as a, as a student uh, association. Uh, secondly, I will also be attempting to capitalise on the main careers fair held in the Bonar Hall. We do not currently have that great an attendance. It's a smattering of people, but it's not that much. Um, I think that... Uh, Basically, there are stronger, bigger and better careers for benefit pretty much every student. And I've currently worked with the careers uh, uh, staff on uh, during uh, sponsored, uh, sponsored uh, scholarships as well as uh, internships, things like that. Uh, and I know that they would jump at the opportunity to get more students involved in their careers fair and uh, other sort of similar events. Finally, I want to continue working on the university's RAG Week as I believe it's an entirely worthwhile cause. We've uh, always been a successful university at raising money for associated charities and I believe that holding this event will allow students uh, who are willing to uh, give up their time and donate their time to helping the charities in need and I also think that this, this will help students build on their own CVs. Um, I'd like to point out just now that I've not brought communication with the students uh, themselves up in my uh, three policies because I think that by completing my three policies this will in turn be completed. Um, Finally, um, I have the relevant experience uh, to help your society get to where it needs to be. Consider me a piece of the Dusa jigsaw. I am a puzzle that has uh, had its, its sides moulded by the experiences that I've had and shared with other people, and I fit into this, uh, this committee. I fit into the Dusa exec. Um, so I urge you to believe in me, as others have before, uh, and vote for me as your next VPSA on the uh, 6th, 7th and 8th of March. Thank you very much. Any questions? Nice words for the bar staff. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, I suppose both, both, of, both of you cheery candidates were incredibly positive. I noticed that we've now broken the barrier of 100 um, student societies um, in DUSA this year, um, which is wonderful, but um, is there not an issue with the effective management of such a large group of societies? Um, some of them do come and go. I would agree and disagree. Um, with regards to the management, uh, it's difficult. it is difficult to manage a large number. However, I think that our current VPSA has done a good job at this. I think the main problem is in terms of contact. Um, we are providing, I know from working with the VPSA just now, that we have tried to make contact with pretty much every society. We take the details down. Uh, we ask for committee membership uh, uh, to, see who's, to see who else is on the committees of these societies if they cannot turn up to events. Um, but sometimes, again, being, coming back to this, there is a certain degree of student apathy going on here. There is a lack of... Uh, attendance to a lot of these uh, events. Uh, I mean, having affiliated pretty much 20 societies, which is what we've increased the society number by this year, um, it's difficult to keep in contact with all of them, given that they don't want to give uh, contact back. Um, I think they're willing to profit from DUSA, but not allow DUSA to profit from them, uh, given that they don't want to take part necessarily in the organisation of events, meetings, things like that. Okay. Do you have a view, Andy? Um, <laughs> A lot of, I um, agree with a lot, a lot of what Durgo says, but not as a cop-out in that I, I think it, that when we talk about engagement of all societies, I, I don't think we're, we can be complacent and to think that that will ever be a, a, a way of, of do so. Hopefully it can be, but I, I think that that would be a tall order for anybody to, to kind of go down the route. I, th I think in terms of uh, engagement with societies that we've lost touch with, um, it is just working hard and, and keeping that constant contact. And you mentioned about um, societies that kind of go up and down. I, I, I think the good thing about about DUSA and yes, the the, the person who is going to sit in in the VPS um, a chair is will change every year. However, there is more continuity um, with the handover of them to then keep in touch with the societies because obviously 
interest will go up and down for certain societies, but it's keeping that momentum and, uh, and encouragement um, through the chair of um, VPSA. Okay, thanks. I suppose I'm worried about money. Uh, I always worry about money. It's, you'll find as you get older you'll worry about it even more as well. Um, you put out a lot of money to societies. Do you have an audit scheme? Should you have an audit scheme? Um, we currently apply, um, well, we, we have to fight as, uh, as sort of society's reps, and I know that most of it's done on the uh, behalf of uh, Anna as the current VPSA. The current budget for student societies is £30,000, and um, that's what has been agreed uh, upon, and uh, I think this year the society's uh, funding council has done exceptionally well in sticking to that and not going daft, to use the word, in uh, just handing money out willy-nilly. We have a very scrutinising process for... Um, making sure societies are f sort of filling all the right criteria to get this funding money. We don't just let anybody have it. Um, it is hard to get. However, if you're making the right efforts in sort of trying to get your own funding sorted out, maybe if it just isn't quite enough, or if what you're wanting to do is specifically going to benefit a large number of students and a small society is not capable of getting this amount of money, we are more than happy to help you get to your, uh, get to your cause and get to your aim. Um, that's about all I've got to say for that matter, really. Okay, Andy? I, th I think following on from that, I think it's not just about um, the, the fact of, of giving the money. I think it is as perhaps for some uh, giving it with a proviso that um, when, when you accept certain money that you have to fulfil a certain criteria because I think year on year cer certain societies, and rightly so, get a, a big chunk of the money. However, I think for newer um, small and societies also get a chunk of the money. However, going forward, I think if we were to not rate, that isn't what I mean, but put a proviso on um, societies that you're getting this amount of money, but for you to be able to get that next year, you have to come back with evidence to, to such. Okay, rather than me banging on about money, I suspect there may be some questions from the audience. There's a gentleman in the suit. Thank you very much. Uh, as a president of an active society on campus and also a member of the funding council, I have a few questions for both candidates. Uh, I do support the idea of giving more money to the society since I do believe that that's the way to uh, move forward. I do believe that that's the way to engage with uh, a bigger proportion of the student body uh, at the university. However, uh, having in mind that, uh, as Douglas said, that only £16,000 have been awarded to societies as of now and most events have already passed, how would you uh, promote societies to apply for more funding? How would you encourage them? What policies do you have in that aspect? Furthermore, I haven't heard anything about uh, uh, the new uh, university transcript uh, uh, change. Uh, I don't know how many people here are aware of that, but uh, it's a, it is uh, a plan to have uh, all exact roles uh, show up on your university transcript. Do you think that's a good thing? Do you think that people should, enc should be encouraged to uh, disclose that information? And should people be allowed to uh, stop the university from disclosing such information if they don't want to, uh, it to appear on their CV and their transcript? Uh, and that, just a third question, um, uh, I'll be really short. I think by the time we get to the end of the third question, we'll have forgotten what the first one was. All right. So could, just, just one, could, two, we, could two, we go back to the first one? Two words, accountability mechanism. How would you make the societies accountable? We've heard from Andy, uh, we already do that, in effect. We already have to uh, get the, the last year's balance sheet. We already have to get all the members' lists all the exact lists and so on. How would you, would, what make accountability mechanism would you create for, for societies? Okay, Thank you. let's start at the end then. Um, <laughs> let's start at the end with accountability. Andy? Well, well, I think what, 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 I, what I would envisage is not just accountability and in what you've spent the money on, but I think uh, there should be uh, points of progression because we want all societies to grow bigger and better. So I don't think it's just about what I, I was using the example there of money. But I think in order to attain that money, it's not just about what you've spent the money on and showing that, but showing that you've grown as a society. And uh, that's not necessarily in numbers, 
but in, in, in things that you've done throughout the year to warrant of getting that money? Um, as obviously we've both worked on the, uh, the society's council ourselves, um, I don't think just now with regards to societies getting the, the funding that they need, uh, we don't need to change anything with regards to the funding council process. Perhaps I think more of an education should go out as to how to go around getting funding. I don't want to make the application process difficult. I want to make maybe securing the funding itself not made easy, not difficult, just not made easy, because that's going to basically sort of start the ball rolling for Sundays, uh, Sundays for societies uh, jumping on the uh, bandwagon and trying to get a lot of money for effectively little gain, a uh, little work. Sorry, um, that's about it, really. I don't think I don't think there's very much um, that we have to do as a, as a funding council to to differ from that, really. Thank you. Okay, I'm sorry, Shivko. The, the the second point I didn't understand at all. Transcripts, ah. And what were you objecting to about transcripts? I'm not objecting, I'm just asking about their opinion as candidates. Uh, maybe the current VPSA could uh, explain a little bit more about that. Okay. Oh, it was an idea that was running through the Societies Council that maybe we can encourage membership and accountability from society studios uh, by saying to them that the benefit will be also to have their membership as an exec member of a particular society be reflected on the transcript. So what my question is, and probably Zivkos as well, because we all wonder that this process might be happening, okay. what would you do to actually move it forward? Andy? I, I think that would be a fantastic thing to do because um, people that do do the job well, I think deserve the credit and do take on the role and fulfill it. Um, I would, I, I would, I would endorse that and, and work, work with all parties involved to, to get it off the ground. I would have to agree. Um, I know myself, from, and as do a number of yourselves out there, who are the heads of societies or senior members of societies, or not even societies, organisations within the university or without. Um, it is difficult to get up there and organise a lot of these events yourself, um, particularly when you don't have. Uh, specific financial backing behind you or specific benefits, I think that we have to make clear the benefits of becoming an affiliated society but also the, the benefits of becoming an affiliated society that attends regularly the meetings and actively contributes. I um, mean that was one of the things I said in my statement, there aren't enough societies doing this, whether it's apathy, communication, I, I don't know but I think that uh, having these transcripts is, uh, is a very good idea in terms of showing the benefit of being an active uh, communicative society. Okay, thanks. Uh, hi, I'm Craig. Um, this question is to both candidates, but it's about a word that you've used in your candidate statement, Douglas. Um, you've used the word lobby, You're promising to lobby for better DUSA benefits for societies that are affiliated with DUSA. Um, in my opinion, it's very easy for a candidate to promise to lobby for this, that and the other. But as has been mentioned, um, and we know after the AGM, DUSA last year ran on a deficit of £127,000. What can you say to convince the voter that what you are pledging to lobby for is actually attainable and it isn't just meaningless election buzzwords? One of the key things uh, that I'm known for within my own society is for being relentless in sort of pursuing what I, as, as a president representing my society members, wants. I, I want to make sure that happens. Um, if I want an event or if I, I've been told by my society members that they want an event, pub quiz, uh, ball, whatever, they get that event to the standards that they want it and to the standards that they're paying for it. The same thing I want to apply on a larger scale to the societies. If I promise affiliations, uh, affiliated societies uh, benefits, or if I say I'm going to lobby or fight for it, I do fully intend to, to fight for it. Um, I want to maybe try and pass motions at the SRC that the SRC will campaign uh, for these benefits. I want to have something written down in paper saying that those societies that are affiliated and attend regularly will get uh, the benefits. Currently, um, if you, you're allowed five uh, memberships, uh, sorry, five uh, meetings things uh, that you're allowed not to attend, uh, sending no representative from your society, I want to decrease this down to two, because just now having, having five out of, a, I think, 13 or 14 possible uh, meetings a year, having five, that's nearly half, that's, that's not acceptable to be not sending anybody from your society unless you happen to be a very small society and you're all away, that's different, but for the large societies I want to uh, prove that there is, there is something worth coming for, and in turn by doing that, that will bring do uh, benefits in terms of uh, promoting its events, promoting its activities and making it profit and hence trying to get out of this deficit. Andy? Um, I don't think, I, I think it is important to, to be succinct with your policies. However, I, I do respect that 
when it's something that you're unaware of whether it's possible to achieve, the fact that you're, you are outwardly professing to, 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 to look at doing it, I think, it's maybe not maybe enough, but uh, at least you're you're making an effort to towards showing that that's what you want to try and achieve. Francis, the left hand side, lady with the scarf. Andy, one of your policies was to build on the fantastic work of Rag Week. I just wanted to know if you were involved in Rag Week at all this year. If you mean the organising, no, but I, I, I did attend some of the, the things that went on, yeah. Okay, so if you weren't involved, then how are you going to, how do you have any experience to better it next year? Well, I think, again, work, working, you, you don't do things on your own. You, you, have, you have a committee behind you, um, and as Douglas mentioned earlier, um, there is going to be an active committee that uh, is in charge of RAG Week next year and I think it's important to work with them and that I would imagine if it's people that are running from this year to do that then there will be significant expertise on that committee. Um, Andrew. Thanks. A uh, question again to Andy. Um, this isn't your first time running for uh, an executive position. Um, what makes you feel that this is now, the VPSA is the right role for you now to when you've run for other positions in the past? Well, as, as I said in my speech, I have a passion for Dundee University and having had an active role um, through the past, well, especially this last year, but before, I, 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 want, I think this is the best way to bring the union forward and to help with the engagement of, of the students, obviously hand in hand with the uh, Vice President of Engagement. Um, one more from the back, lady with a hand up. Thank you, it's me again. This is a question to both candidates because I feel Douglas hasn't had a chance to say much. Um, uh, it's great that so many new societies can form and, and that there's so, many, so much diverse discussion on campus, but my question to both candidates is, where would you draw a line on quite politically radical societies and how would you feel about more radical societies and do you have a process for kind of vetting the societies that could potentially form on campus? We do have a process for vetting the societies. Those are the, uh, the councils that I was talking about earlier. Um, if you have a quorum of uh, currently which stands, uh, as far as I'm aware, at 50% of the societies, um, we need 50% of the societies to turn up in order for us to make a, a reasonable vote as to whether or not people can or cannot become affiliated as a society with the university. We have had uh, the situation, I will not name any societies in particular, who have had specific... Uh, specific views, spe specific opinions, and as long as those opinions are not actively used as a weapon against other societies, used to make people feel uncomfortable, used uh, as any sort of intimidation really, those societies are normally allowed to prevail if they do however breach these rules afterwards because these are, these are made clear to them by uh, a, a sort of a mini hustings effectively when uh, the societies are allowed to question the, the, the the wannabe societies, um, if they do disagree um, with uh, what they've said they're going to do in the past, uh, they can become unaffiliated or disaffiliated if uh, there's a general vote and consensus that that's what should happen. Uh, I think, as was mentioned earlier, we're such a diverse university that I don't think that we would want to curtail any society that wants to appear um, at Dundee University, but obviously we have a duty of care in that um, it is contained within DUSA's um, bylaws and, and DUSA's uh, feeling for, for representing all students. Um, so I would say that there shouldn't be any society that shouldn't be allowed to exist, but it's, it's whether we choose to affiliate them on, on the grounds that are in the, um, the, the what's it called? The bylaws. Bylaws, thank you, yes. Okay, I think we might... Um, Glad to see you keeping an eye on it. Thank you for your answers. Thank you. I think we might um, just give the two candidates a chance to ask each other a couple of questions because um, time's whacking on. It's beginning to get a bit more interesting, isn't it? You can go first. Anything to ask, Douglas? I don't really think I do, actually. I'll let Douglas go. Douglas. With um, no disrespect at all, 
uh, having attended every single society's meeting, have atten having attended all the funding council uh, meetings, bar one where I, I couldn't add a family bereavement, and uh, having helped not organise uh, but sort of host a number of the events. I was up here on stage uh, at the hot dog eating competition. I was selling raffles at uh, one of the karaoke nights, uh, various other things like that. How do you think you'll be able to bring experience to promote all of these events, all of which you've talked about promoting, um, given that you have no experience in, in these this year or this last year? Um, I, I, th I think the promotion of the events is is fairly easy task to do. Um, uh, well, in that it's, it's, it's a lot easier to promote an event um, and support than it is to organise it from scratch, not knowing the society. But with you saying not having been to societies this year, I think that provides a fresh face and uh, a face that would then not have a, a bias towards any current societies that are on the, um, the, the council. Okay, thanks very much. Rachel, did you have an observation to make? So, no, question. Uh, I think we've had enough questions. One more. Got the mic. Go on then. Okay. Uh, there's been a lot of focus. I, I'm a former VPSA. Um, um, well, as a former VPSA, uh, I do believe that the VPSA has more than just societies. Now, a lot of attention has just been focused around societies to, tonight. Now, during my year as VPSA, I brought in RAG Week. Anna did a fantastic job with RAG Week this, this, this year and is also implementing uh, an international festival. What can you guys bring to the role that is not just society affiliated? Well, I think I kind of stipulated that as one of my policies is, and I mentioned that in my, my speech, that it isn't just um, about uh, societies and, and, and bringing the, the face of the SRC towards more, um, more students. And I realise that that's not predominantly a VPSA role um, and it probably more towards Vice President of Engagement or the um, involvement with the Deputy President, but I think that it's such an important part of, of DUSA and maintaining uh, student kind of support that it shouldn't just be one person looking at it and, and I, I would, that's something that I would really push for next year. Um, it's a good point. Um, I know that uh, currently there's the implementation of a new uh, RAG Week Council of which I have uh, already submitted an application for but I think, uh, and I mentioned it in my statement, Anybody who was here at the events where I was selling raffle tickets or the people who have received ball tickets or even the events managers at DUSAB will know that until, not, not in a spoilt brat sort of respect, but until I get what I've been told I'm going to get, I am relentless. I, I will not stop. I will be out there in the rain telling people to come to events, telling people this, that and the next thing. Um, I've done it before. I'm happy to do it again for particularly a bigger, more prestigious job such as this. Um, I will ensure that... Uh, not so much that we have any more events. I think an international festivities week and I think the RAG week are all we need. I think they just need to be built upon and I think more pressurising of students themselves to come to these events and support their own university, support the charities that these uh, events stand for and support uh, do so on the whole, something, something that they have voted for and that they come to enjoy the facilities of every week is uh, key here. I think that's what needs to be worked upon. Okay, thanks very much. I think that'll do for these two, otherwise we're going to be here all night. Um, can we move on, please? Another couple of good candidates you've got. Could we move on? Thank you very much, gentlemen. Um, look after you, sir. And the next one is um, VP Campaigns and Communications. Thank you for coming. So uh, my uh, theme tune pretty much sums up me. A uh, little bit cringy, but funny at the same time, hopefully. However, the song does make a valid point in suggesting that you're never fully dressed without a smile. I believe happiness is the key to success. It's my ambition to see our students having a smile on their faces. I want them to be enthusiastic, excited about what's going on within our union. 
I want our students to be happy, feel part of the community, and have a strong desire to get involved. With a greater student support for our union comes a greater chance of it running successfully. So why am I the lady for the job? When I began uni, I had no idea about student politics or what exactly the executive did. But having worked in the retail side of DUSA, I have been able to gain a deeper insight as to what, how our union is run. It has allowed me to get to know various spaces around campus, and this has resulted in me feeling like a stronger, sorry, feeling like a part of a stronger student community. Although I have not previously ran for an executive role or for a position in SRC, I have been involved in a couple of election campaigns, which have resulted in an increasing desire for my want to get personally involved. I feel that I'm a good candidate for the job because I'm friendly, approachable, and have integrity. I care about people's needs. I'm a natural listener, someone to come to for advice. I'm a true team player, and that's something that I feel is important as being part of the executive, as it is important to listen and work with others to achieve the best results. As I am running for VPCC, my main focus will be on campaigns and the various DUSA media outlets. It is my goal to encourage students to get actively involved in campaigns. One of my main policies is to provide students with greater access to politics. I wish to provide a gateway to student involvement in important social and political issues affecting them, such as the up-and-coming referendum on Scottish independence. I feel it is important for students to be aware of the current political and social climate and to understand how it affects them and what exactly their vote can mean. Raising mental health awareness is another campaign which I wish to promote, hopefully working alongside the VPSW. Being a student means we can often be faced with times of great stress, I know personally myself. I want to highlight what affects students the most and how much strain things such as financial worries can cause. I hope to make students more aware of the various forms of help available to them regarding these issues. Furthermore, I'm hoping to implement my policy of students supporting student enterprise by encouraging students' ideas and employability through facilitating the start-up of growth of student business ideas. In regards to DUSA Media, the Magdalene and DUSA TV have done very well this past year and I would like to keep the standard high and bring DUSA Radio up to their standard whilst ever increasing the quality of the media output. I aim to do this by bringing in training for the radio presenters and providing podcasts for the student body. However, I do realise that all these outlets already have a lot of work put into them and have great potential. So if you give me the opportunity to become VPCC, I promise to use the position to implement my policies to their fullest extent. I am dedicated to the role and would really appreciate the opportunity to manage the task and focus on topics which are of concern to the students today. Also, before I finish, uh, my, I give my apologies to anyone who was insulted by my uh, complete lack of ability to spell. Um, unfortunately, spelling is something that I've had a problem with for quite a while and I'm seeking help with. But um, particularly those involved with the Magdalene, I really do apologise. I've been stressing about it all day. Um, I hope that I get the chance to work with you and that you don't hold it against me. Thank you very much. Just a couple of questions from me. You're probably quite a favourite of mine because you sell me cigarettes. Um, <laughs> and there's never asked about my age, funnily enough. <laughs> oh, well. um, what in practice, you, you, one of your policies was um, access to politics. Mm -hmm. what, what does that actually mean in practice? Well, I feel that a lot of students, um, they're 18 whenever they come to university and obviously the voting age is 18. So a lot of people who perhaps haven't studied politics at school maybe don't watch the news because they're preoccupied with music or whatever. Not everyone, by the way, because I know a lot of people are passionate about politics. I was a politics student at school myself. But a lot of people don't understand like the current politics. A lot of it they feel is older people and it's a bit boring. Um, but I feel that it's something that's important. And especially with the up and coming referendum, I feel that people need to know what exactly they're voting for because it's, it's a big, big thing, Scottish independence or not. So I would like to bring in various people from various political parties to get them to explain to <coughs> students what exactly their policies are and what exactly following them and voting for them would mean. And the second one is a sort of follow-up to that. Um, your, one of your other things was um, students for enterprise and uh, student business startups. How? Well, um, personally, I know a lot of females in particular have um, 
health and beauty uh, qualifications that they've taken part in while studying at university as well. And I see them like having their various uh, Facebook groups working from home or whatever. So obviously I haven't looked into the complete legalities of it all and as a law student I'm aware that there are legal issues. But what I would like to do is uh, perhaps once a week uh, have a room set aside that can be booked out in slots for uh, various people that have their own business ideas to come along, book the room out, use it for, for their business purposes and to hopefully get the students to support them. Um, yep. <laughs> Okay, and just just one more, um, you know, I, I I sit in Deuce of board meetings and I listen to stuff about Deuce of media and Twitter and Facebook and radio and all the rest of it. Most of it passes me by. I suspect, I, I suspect an awful lot of it passes the bulk of students by. Um, there is still that perception that Deuce is uh, just a place for cheap pints and not much more. Now we might all think that's wrong, and I'm convinced that it is, but uh, how do you actually try and deal with that sort of low-level perception? Well, I think that it's important for the students to learn just exactly how much work goes into the Justin Media. The guys like work so long. Maggie in particular, I know, works hours upon hours. I've seen her outside the library stressing so much about how much work, and I'm like, Maggie, go home and sleep. So I feel that perhaps maybe tweaking the websites, getting it out there, promoting it more, perhaps handing out leaflets, Facebook groups, whatever. I've got a loud voice as well. I can somehow <laughs> use that, hopefully, to get it out there. So. OK, thanks. Questions from the floor? Haven't heard from you. Um, I was wondering if you've spoken to Daniel, the current VPCC, about the position specifically. Mm -hmm. And what advice did he offer you about? Um, he, what he said to me was basically what you put into the role is what you get out of it. So whatever uh, policies I have, I have to work strongly with them. And personally, I'm someone who likes to get actively involved. So I'm not just going to be going, right, you do that, you do this. Like, I want to be there in the middle. I want to hear other people's suggestions. Like, obviously, I can't come up with everything on my own. And I don't want to be like, right, you have to do this, you have to do that. Like, I want people to work with me and get involved and give their opinions because I want it to be something that everyone is happy with. So basically, I'm just going to ask around to be like, guys, what do you want from it? And then hopefully implement that. Okay. Sorry, I'm making you run about with that microphone. Right across the other side. You'll be thin by the end of this evening. <laughs> Not to suggest that you're... <laughs> okay, thinner. <laughs> I don't really know how to follow that. Um, I've got more of a request than a question for you, okay? Um, in the last four years, for better or worse, I've been involved in every different group, part of Dusa Media. Could you put into place some kind of regulation so that if, for example, the radio is broken for four months, a manager can be removed from a position and somebody more competent can be put in place. Because I know for a fact, and Andy, you defended yourself, I'm not trying to slight you here, it does not take four months to sort out technical problems. I sat with Sam Gray in those offices while he fixed the radio himself, getting calls in the middle of the night, coming, get, being dragged back to fix stuff. People can do it. It's easy enough to do. We've got a huge computing base in Dundee. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to sort it. Could you put in place something so that if, for example, part of the media isn't working, we can sort it out in the middle of term, as opposed to waiting months and months and months before anybody does anything about it. Um, my answer to that would be, yes, I think it's like four months to get something fixed is very unnecessary. So uh, how I would approach that would be hopefully to speak to everyone involved within the radio or whatever um, outlet that was and ask them what their feeling was. And if there's a vote of no confidence, then perhaps address, firstly I would address the person concerned and be like, look, can you pull your weight? Like, there's, there's not any confidence here with you. And if they don't see it through, then hopefully I'd like to implement something that would sort of get them replaced, because four months is quite a long time. Okay, thanks. One more? Somebody we haven't heard from. Have I heard from you? Yes, yeah. is a is a relatively short question. Sorry, keep running, boy. <laughs> Hello, Zakela. My name is Finlay. I'm the former editor of the magazine. Um, 
I was elected to the position um, alongside the DUSA elections a couple of years ago. However, this year um, that appointment has been changed and now the editors uh, of all the outlets have been, are being appointed. Now, I actually disagree with a lot of people about this. I don't think that's right. I think um, that the manager should be appointed because student media is a part of the democracy um, that we're meant to have. Uh, do you have an opinion on this? And do you sorry, think this sorry, could you repeat that? I couldn't make you out there properly. Sorry. sorry. Um, do you think that the uh, appointment of the editors and the managers should run alongside the elections or do you think it should be chosen by the new media guidance panel? Sorry, by the new... The media guidance panel. Um, do you know, do, well, do you know about the change? No, sorry. Okay, so previously, before this year, the managers were all elected uh, by the students alongside the DUSA elections. Right. Um, but that's no, that no, no longer happens. Uh, they're chosen by the media guidance panel, of which there's only one elected uh, representative on. Um, do you think that's right, or do you think the manager should be chosen by the students? Um, as I've been unaware of this point until now, I'd have to say that I couldn't answer that until I... like. Uh, knew all the ins and outs regarding the situation, so I wouldn't want to give an answer not knowing the full extent as to why, sorry. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Do I get the sense that Ron's on a hide into nothing with this one? <laughs> Thank well you. And uh, the next one's another single candidate, um, Deputy President Jade Ray. Deciding to write this speech, I came to the decision that I didn't want to list off a number of adjectives that describe why I would be suitable for the role of Deputy President. We all do that for jobs, but ultimately, unless you know me, me telling you the certain reasons I'm passionate, positive, considerate, you know, I need to prove that to you before you'll realise. What ma many of you may already know about me is that I'm loud. <laughs> And uh, I am in your face. And you only have to walk by the Premier uh, to hear. If I'm working, you'll hear me before you'll see me. However, this is because I'm a passionate person and I believe that this will serve me well in my role. And I would also like to point out that I am capable of conducting myself in an appropriate manner in the necessary situations. <laughs> I never thought when I started uni I would end up here. Quite frankly, it's exciting and daunting equally. I'm very looking forward to the challenge, if you will have me. I want to discuss my policies briefly so that I have ample opportunity to answer any questions for you. My first policy is that I would like class representatives to be accountable for their year, ensuring that the in-house training that we provide is enforced, to ensure that international students feel comfortable in their new surroundings, with a greater interaction between all students and finally a greater level of student engagement with an increased awareness of all resources available. Drawing on my past experiences, most recently and probably the most demanding role I have taken on was fourth year representative of the Law Society. I didn't know anyone particularly well on the committee but I revelled in the role as well as thoroughly enjoying the work that, that, ha that went on. It's a role that doesn't actually require constant input However, I feel I proved at every point and event that I wanted to be actively involved, helping out wherever was needed. I like to think that I'm naturally a leader. However, this role has taught me when to take a step back and follow instruction. And despite the stresses of final year that we all have, I'm really glad that I took on the challenge. As I'm sure some of you know, I'm also a mem an active member of the SRC. I would like to point out that it is not a prerequisite that you be involved in SRC just to run for a role in the exec. However, this has given me insight to the infrastructure, infrastructure set up to cater for students. And I also know that you've been, talk, been told about this, certain things that we wish to do to improve awareness, so I don't want to reiterate that again. Working for DUSA for the past two years has allowed me to have much greater contact with the student body. My favourite aspect for working for Premier is the beginning of each academic year. 
seeing new freshers come in wide-eyed and exciting, excited to begin a new part of their life. I enjoy that. I revel in that, and I welcome them to the, Dun to the University of Dundee. I don't deny that I've also become friends with some of the people that I only originally knew as customers, but I'm hope that, I hope that reiterates my friendly nature and shows how much I actually do care for the students of Dundee. Finally, in my personal life, I like to think that I'm an organiser, the person who my friends come to with a problem they may be facing. And watching Rachel this year and knowing her, I have come to the conclusion that the ability to be sympathetic whilst being assertive and proactive are invaluable qualities to possess within this role. I have these qualities and I hope after the evening, which I'm not going to lie, I have dreaded because as loud as I may be, I'm not a great fan of public speaking, that you will have the confidence in me to take on the role and vote for me for your new deputy president. Thank you. Um, one of the um, probably more hidden but most significant roles of the Deputy President is acting as um, the student's voice in the context of formal complaints and appeals mm -hmm. to the university. Mm -hmm. what, um, what particular skills and experience can you bring to that? Well, first and foremost, I would like to think that I am a very approachable person. Um, second to that, I think that I have the ability to communicate myself well with both students and members of authority, members within the university who I would have to deal with on a daily or weekly basis. Um, the, deal, the issue of appeals particularly is obviously very important for students. They're fighting for their chance to get back into university. That's something that shouldn't be taken lightly and it's something that I feel that I would be able to encourage, providing that they, you know, they want to be here as much as I want them to be here that I would be able to work with them and work well with them to try and ensure the best possible outcome. Okay, thanks. Um, representation is the other big deal for the Deputy President. Um, I remember a previous Deputy President saying to me that um, the perception of the uh, representation system at the university is that it's incredibly flawed, um, doesn't work very well, um, when in fact his view of it was that uh, it was extremely effective um, and was probably the best in Scotland. Irrespective of either, what's the big issue that faces student <coughs> representation, the biggest and most important issue that faces student representation here? Well. Drawing on personal experience, I would have to say that in regardless of my own course anyway, I can't speak for others. Um, in my course, people don't actually know who their class representatives are. And that's just me being honest. I don't know whether it's a lack of want to work with students or whether it's just a case of, you know, it's, a fa it's something that you can put down in your CV. There's very little work to do with it. But that's why one of my policies is to place a level of responsibility in class representatives. Um, there is in-house training, I believe, available for Dundee. I don't know how well that's enforced, but I feel like if you place a level on accountability with class representatives and get them to not only engage with the students who, whenever they have an issue, we're all guilty of complaining on Facebook, putting it as a Facebook status, but if they're aware that there's an outlet that they can speak to, because essentially the class reps should be speaking with the, the school presidents. The school presidents sit on the student representative council who engage with the executive. That's why I believe the structure that we have is actually a very good one as long as it's being utilised to its full effect. And the third um, most significant part of being a deputy president is being the, uh, very, that very thing, the deputy president and deputising for the future president of the Students Association. Um, what's your approach to teamwork and relationships with colleagues? Well, I would like to think I've actually a very good relationship with any colleague that I've worked with in a professional basis. Um, drawing on personal experience, I've also 
had teamwork. I was involved in with Habitat for Humanity. I went to Uganda. We built a house. Obviously, that's very different. But what I do think I can take from that is the fact that it shows that I have the capability of adapting myself to any situation with a group of people that I don't know and being able to work well with that. In more recent experience, obviously working on the committee of the Law Society, having a number of events that have been put on, working with people I don't know, and again, working on the Student Representative Council, I've been able to prove that I'm a very approachable person and that I am more than willing to engage in any sort of teamwork aspect because essentially there is no I in team. You may be able to do something well by yourself, but if you're working in a team then, and you work well together, then you can only build on that. Okay, thanks very much. Questions from the floor? Hi, Jade. Um, Charlotte, again. Um, you said in your speech that you wanted um, international students mm. as well as British students to um, interact more. Mm. How do you actually plan on doing that as the international societies are very close-knit? Okay, well, I have actually spoken with the International Advice Centre um, because I wanted to become more aware of what is already in place with international students. It's, first of all, I, I hate for anyone to feel like I'm being patronising. It's just knowing myself going across to Kuala Lumpur in the summer whereby they have a completely different culture to me. I thought I would find that very difficult to integrate, but because they were so hospitable, actually I found it very easy. So it's something that I feel quite close with. and. Speaking with them, they definitely do have a lot of social activities that are already engaged. I know obviously with the current VPSA, Anna, she has the entire international week happening next week. But for me, I want to try and attempt to bridge a gap that I feel, working for Premier anyway, I've, I've, I have felt that there has still been segregation between students who you know, are based in the UK and students who are international and also probably European students as well. Um, it would be my want to be to work with DISA next year and to try and further what's already been done in order to just to create more integration between students all together, whether it be certain events. I mean, I know there are events that are put, not put on already, but to sort of further that and build on that. Any others? One at the front there. Uh, thank you. Um, Conor McQueen, President of Dundee Labour Students. Um, on the point in student engagement, um, I was just wondering, it's been almost four years now, um, mm -hmm. I was just wondering if you would support um, in, sort of in the next year a referendum on affiliation to the NUS? No. Because you said that was such a critical issue that needed to be enhanced. I, I personally am not in support of the NUS. I personally feel that being the number one university for the student experience in the UK says it all and maybe for, maybe for fun have a referendum just to prove that we don't need it and that we'll never need it. I, su I suspect that's probably quite a good place to finish unless you have... <laughs> Probably a, it probably is a good place to finish. I'll leave, I'll leave, I'll leave you till later. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. And, um, and I, I suppose now we've got to the bit that we've been waiting for where we can really start being slightly more, well, slightly less polite. Um, could we have our first candidate for the presidency, please, Mr. Dinsdale? <laughs> Thanks for that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, our very own Mr. Dimbleby tonight, to uh, President Kennedy, who mercifully hasn't been shot yet, the Deucer Executive, ladies and gentlemen, and fellow hopefuls. Being my very first hostings, it's, an excite it's, it's exciting for me to have the opportunity to impress upon you just how far-reaching and genuine my passion and enthusiasm for this position is. Certainly my zeal and rigour in my seat as Society and Schools Environment President has not gone unnoticed, and I'm reassured that my direct and my enthusiastic contribution to each and every meeting has established me as a refreshingly rigorous, focused and vocal member of your SRC, working hard and being committed to getting things done for you. 
Now, I've been a student at Dundee for longer than any of the other candidates before you this evening and have been able to experience at first hand the continuing progress of the city, the university and our union as one. This is precisely the reason that I am keen to stay. Unlike the other candidates here this evening, my passion for this position is not born from some idle insecurities about job hunting or career prospects. I've got a couple of degrees, uh, one more hopefully coming, fingers crossed, a couple of job offers and future places at universities, both Dundee and away. But I hope that my standing here in this, you know, you people, your political firing line is proof of my bold and selfless commitment to our university, my commitment to the student body and a belief in my ability to represent you as a great DUSA president. The other lads coming up next will talk about their involvement with the exec today. Obi-Wan over there, a recent incumbent to the university, tries to chair the meetings, albeit in his typical reasonably laid back style. And Indiana Mc Ian McKinnon, as a secretary for almost <laughs> two years now, has been well placed to make a difference. Indeed, Ian is a good, silent, impartial role. But what neither of these fine, fine gentlemen can offer is a boldness and a proven confidence that will be absolutely key in developing DUSA and the role of the President going through these next few years, these next few months, and these potentially tough times. We've heard about DUSA's financial deficit, thanks to our very own Gordon Brown right here. We know about broader <laughs> financial and political difficulties, fee increases, increased student expectations with the fee hike, and other wider influences, namely the ready term cuts that not many people have mentioned tonight. But it is a strong, independent and forthright figure, such as myself, that is needed to steer the association through these times. One of the biggest perceived problems to our representative body is a reported lack of connection to the student population and an undeniable lack of awareness about what the representatives are achieving. Now this has got to change. There's a great, great turnout this evening. It's great to see a load of people here. But as I said, it's only my first hustings and I've got nothing to compare that to in the past. However, what I can do is to look around the room, so many beautiful potential voters, I might add. But I, what I do notice is the 16,900 give or take missing students. And it's these students that we need to engage with more. People need to know clearly, and that's the point, clearly that they can get involved and in the simplest terms, just how they can get involved. It's taken me until my sixth year at Dundee to even become aware of the existence of an executive. I've been a keen patron of the union today, but it's simply not good enough. These are things, all things, that I continue to work closely with on the appointed executive, with the SRC councillors and the senior university staff with whom I've already become well acquainted. For those of you who were there, you would have heard rector, our rector, Brian Cox, talk at the AGM of his ambition of breeding a culture of responsibility in each student. And engaging with every single student now, whether through clearer information, better publicity, better promotion, better feedback, greater accountability, and by establishing a much stronger presence on campus is absolutely essential. Student apathy is an excuse I've heard a lot lately. It's not a valid excuse. There's little point being defensive about the current engagement of the current exec, because where student dissatisfaction is still evident, it's only proof that DUSA can and should do more. So let's change that. Stand up. Each and every person has a responsibility to change that together. It's not going to be easy, but through better off-campus promotion of the exec and of DUSA at Ninewells, Kakodi, thank you Francis, etc. And by giving clearer updates and feedback, by promoting, by actually promoting our silent successes, things can change and we can change them together. As a school president and as a councillor on the SRC, I have listened to individual concerns. I fought on your behalf as students for extended library opening hours that you asked for, for more efficient timetabling, for earlier publishing of exam dates, and other things like this, and I've proactively secured, single-handedly, almost, meetings and budget policy changes to ensure the immediate maintenance of campus buildings and facilities, therefore improving student working environments, welfare, but also promoting, and something nobody else has mentioned tonight, a more sustainable and a greener campus. I hope that we can build on the strong 
sense of success and the involvement that the AGM showed this week with involvement with, with keen students such as Connor with his um, living wage proposal and the G4S uh, motion, which is very difficult, tied down with lots of intricate difficulties with DUSA and the broader universities. But they're all key issues that we need to address as a concerned and ethically concerned student body. So, in conclusion, it's a great pleasure to be able to address you all tonight, despite the scaremongering about just how brutal the bludgeoning might be from you all. But I'm very happy to be able to address you all this evening as a contender in the race for the presidential seat. I'd be happy to accept any questions, a little bit more heckling, a little bit more involvement, and just remember, vote Dinsdale for do, sir, next week. Thank you. Okay. Um, Ian McKinnon. Hi everyone, uh, most of you know me already, but uh, if you don't, I'm Ian McKinnon, fourth year student here in Dundee, running for president along with Mr. Dinsdale and Mr. Anya Jelly. Uh, role of president's an important one, it's the figurehead of DUSA. You sit on various committees around the university, you sit on the university court, university senate, along with uh, committees inside DUSA that you chair. It's important that the person you have in this role is an advocate for student issues. Uh, the, the, the president has to be an advocate for student, uh, student issues on a local, national and international level which is something I feel I can do. I've been a member of the DUSA executive for, was it my second term now, as honorary secretary. The ONSEC is the convener and minute taker of the Student Representative Council, which a lot of the candidates here tonight are members of, and has dealt with a number of issues which Mr. Dinsdale went through, and I was also part of the uh, SRC that dealt with those issues. I'm also the convener of the disciplinary panel here in DUSA. It's us that ban the people or let them go if they're not guilty, of course. And I'm also the convener of the AGM, the first one in five years that reached quorum. I was the convener of that. In my role at uh, DUSA, I've also been involved in DUSA Media. I've written articles for the Magdalene, and I write weekly reviews for the DUSA Media website, and I used to have a show on Discover Radio as well. Um, aside from all these roles as part of my own second, as a student, I've been a member of DUSA's board, and I've used my position as a member of the exec to get involved in a number of issues. Uh, I think I feel, despite what Jake says, I am quite bold in what I've done. I've in increased food provision in Dusha. I think uh, food, the, the quality of food provision in Dusha, working with our catering development manager. I worked with SRC reps last year to ensure that all our takeaway food is available in biodegradable containers. I've made sure that all SRC motions are published right after the meetings, which never used to happen. I publish uh, the voting records of all our members to make sure you're, you can hold them accountable for what their actions. And I'm currently working on one of what was probably my biggest project to date. It's with the Library and Learning Centre for an anonymous reporting system whereby if you're in the silent section of the library and someone's being annoying and speaking, you'll be able to text a number and a member of staff or a student volunteer will be able to come over and tell that person to basically shut up while you study. But I don't want to stop there. If you elect me as your uh, president for next year, I've got a number of policies I want to get involved with. Three main goals for the year. As a lot of other candidates have said, I want to get better communication engagement for, uh, within DUSA and the university. Like Jake said, apathy is only part of the problem. There's a number of students who I think, if they were better informed about what the executive, the student the representative council and the university did behind the scenes, they would be more engaged. They would want to get more involved with what we, what we do here in the union. The, ec the exec and the SRC need to work with DUSA Media, with their help, and DUSA's marketing department as well, because we have a whole lot of full-time staff here willing to help us market things, to let everyone know what it is that we do. Not just our successes that we do behind the scenes, like increasing library hours and uh, working with Stefan on, Stefan on his motion to try and get the exam dates released earlier, but also our failures, so that students know that at least we did try to do things. For example, I uh, this year attempted to get our, uh, the uh, exam results emailed to all students, but unfortunately I was told that this was just not possible by ICS. But hey, at least eVision worked this year and didn't crash like it's done so often in the past. Uh, secondly, I want a more open and accountable executive. Just, uh, the students and the student body elect the executive and the SRC, and we need to be held accountable for what we do. A lot of students don't vote in the elections, that's understandable, but even if you don't vote, they're still your reps. You need to be able to know what they do and what they do for you. Quite often, students only understand what the reps do when they need them. They, when it's often too late or it's at the last minute and you've got an appeal coming up, you've been banned, something like that. You've got a big housing issue. But I think that the students need to be better informed of what it is that the exec do throughout, the t throughout um, all the issues on campus. If you've got any issue, basically, you can come to the exec about it. It's not just the emergencies. 
I also want more student involvement in uh, the, the university itself. Uh, you should be able to, stu we already have members of the executive sitting on most uh, university committees, but uh, I, I want to see more student involvement in these committees, as well as just the executive. Often in the past, you also hear students say that the executive are up in their ivory tower and they don't do enough to, to get more involved with the students. That's something I want to see improved. I want to see students to be able to come to the executive about any issue, to ask us information about what we've done on this issue, on that issue, what are things we're looking at behind the scenes. It shouldn't be the case that students should find out at the AGM that we're running up. A, we didn't run up a deficit last year of £127,000. It's, pre it's pre predicted for this year. Last year, I think we made a profit, I'd like to point out. But, as you can clap, but we should have made students aware of this more. Students should know that last year we made a profit. They should know that, that we, we did good things last year. And yeah, we are in difficulties this year, but we need to let students know how we're going to try and solve these issues. Finally, I want more involvement in national campaigns. Do so, like I've said, do an awful lot of work behind the scenes on university committees and things. But we don't, we don't let students know what these things are. We have stances on fees. We have stances on all sorts of issues, but we just don't tell the students what these are. We, re we respond to government papers and the like, but we don't ever tell the students what these responses are. Students should be able, we should be keeping them involved, and we should let them know what, are, what, what we're doing. Uh, if students want to get involved in political issues on campus, they should feel able to do so. It's, it's great that the AGM had so much involvement, but the past few years before that, it's been a bit rubbish, and like someone said last year, we had only about seven people at the first one. We want more students to feel that if there is a political issue that they feel strongly about, they should be able to come to DUSA about it. And DUSA should be able to help, not necessarily support them, but facilitate a debate on the issue, like the Scottish independence issue that Zakila mentioned. Although DUSA isn't a member of the NUS, as, as has been pointed out, that doesn't mean our students' voice isn't, doesn't, uh, isn't going to be heard on the national stage. I want to work with other universities, with Aberté, with, if necessary, NUS, to make sure that our students get their, their uh, feelings heard and that our beliefs are passed across to those in power. I've got a lot of more issues uh, going ahead if you do choose to elect me as president. And I'll be out and about on campus over the next week and a half. Uh, feel free to come up and speak to me, ask me any questions you've got, or just ask me questions tonight. And I hope that you feel, once you've heard me speak, once you've I've been out campaigning, that I have the experience, the commitment, and the drive to be the best president that Dusa can have. Thank you. And candidate number three, Obina Onye Jeli. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, everybody. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, fellow students as well. My name is Obina, and I'm running for the position of president. Um, as Jake kindly introduced me earlier, I've only been here for about five months, chairing the SRC. So um, I, can't, I can't obviously make a list of all the achievements that Ian has just made and everything, but fair enough. But I think in my short time here, I've actually been able to contribute one or two things at the university. One of it obviously includes um, introducing chess to the, uh, to the school, university side chair, the, uh, I'm president of the chess society, and I'm also working with a couple of Chinese students as well right now to help them establish a Chinese society, which strangely doesn't exist in the university like this with all the Chinese community as well. Um, I think my policies are pretty much bread and butter issues that relate to students. The first one I've pointed out is to work to increase the external funding for due size universities so that they can better activities for all of you. We've heard about the deficits and all the um, trying to increase the, the, the pay for the staff for the university to the living wage. We've heard about all sorts of things that, that requires money, but then no one generally talks about how to actually get the money to get these things worked out. I was there at the AGM when this motion was brought up and about the, um, sorry, is that, is that, is that, is that, whatever, okay, anyway, I was there um, at the AGM where they talked about increasing to the, to the living wage and then obviously I listened to the president as well when he talked about the funding issues and uh, the financial cost of all these things. Well, all these things, the, the, the motion was a good one, luckily it passed. But then, this coming exec needs to be able to get money to actually get these things worked. Not say, oh, tell the students, well, you guys passed the motion, but then we can't get this thing sorted because we haven't got the money. So this money has to be raised. And I've got plans to raise, this, uh, to raise the money, for, uh, to help raise the money for these issues externally, not just within the university. I'm seeking to negotiate a deal to 
establish 24 hour access to the library. Now, I'm no, I know that this has going on for years and all that stuff, but I've got fresh ideas. I've discussed with the security people there. I've discussed with quite a few people, and money is part of the issue. So if I raise external funding for the university or do so, then this can be sorted out. And besides that, money is an issue about it, but it's not really the biggest issue anyway. So it's all about manpower and people's willpower, determination to actually get this thing moved. And it will be sorted. I intend to do that. Now, we've talked about student apathy and all that, but I think I used a different word in, such as um, re making DUSA relevant to the, to the students. Well, as we can see, this is a very important thing today, and for some reason, students haven't seen the need, the relevance for them to be here. This shouldn't be. We're here talking about things that affect students. If things affect students, and they know, they sh they're shown to see how these things affect them, they should be here. But they're not here. There's, there's a lot of spaces here. 20, 20 people can comfortably say in there, and there still be more spaces. This shouldn't be. If we make the students see how relevant DUSA is to them, and how things that DUSA does affect them, then anything that DUSA does, they'll be more willing to get involved. I intend to make this thing happen, show them how DUSA is relevant to them. For example, if you, if you say, if you're an American, for example, you want to see DUSA recognizing you um, on 4th of July, say no, even something simple as Happy Independence or July 4th or something, that way DUSA is personal to you. It may not be something big, but you want DUSA to acknowledge it. If you're a Muslim, you want to see DUSA Say something like Idel Kaber, Idel Fitri, Idel Malud. They don't necessarily have to throw something big for you or something, but this, that recognition it makes it personal to you, that makes it relevant to you. Finally, I want to proactively help students secure part time jobs in the university and outside university. This is something I help my friends do already outside university because I have, uh, well, I work hard to, to get to know people, people that actually make sense, people that have one or two connections to help them get jobs. Now, so this is simply my thing that I do already, but it's just that I do it to help my personal friends. So this is like a pet project thing that I'm t I intend to bring to the new university as a whole, to, to make it uh, um, beneficial to everybody in the university. And if I'm elected president, I intend to make all these things happen and obviously tackle little minor issues as well that matter to students. For example, some of you have ID cards that university prints out for you. Some of it costs 12 pounds, 13 pounds. Now, it's not allowed that your phone numbers are not there, your personal emails are not there. You want this university to be relevant to you when you finish, when you graduate from this university. You want it to be relevant to you still. So if, you're, if you give out that, uh, that uh, complimentary card to a company, for example, and three months after your graduation, they can't contact you anymore. That is of no use to you. It's of no use. But we need to, we need to sort all these things out and put in such a way that it actually genuinely helps students. You want this university to benefit you even after you've left. That's why you have things, you know, there are things like alumni and everything. That's why you have people who can go out and, and scream out and say, yes, I went to Cambridge University, I went to Oxford University, I went to Harvard, all these things. University has 25 year plans to be the top university in Scotland. If that's achieved, you can go out there proudly and say, yes, 30 years ago I went to University of Dundee. This is how they helped me. They helped, they're, the person, they're the people that made me be where I am right now. That's the sort of university I intend to, to, to work out of my position as DUSA president. And I hopefully, I'll get all your votes and the other people in the university as well, and we can get this thing pushing already. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think, um, I think I'll, I'll actually refrain from asking questions this time. And I think what I'll do is ask uh, each of the candidates to ask each other questions to start us off. Um, would you like to yeah. start with Jack or Obi or either? Yeah, I wrote a question down for Obi. Um, Obi, in your, your speech you talked about getting better funding for the university and how the no, we, none of us spoke about how we were going to do that, but you didn't speak about how you were going to get this funding either. How, how do you plan on getting this funding for DUSA? Yeah, thank you very much. You see, Part of the stuff I realized this university is that the university is very diverse, but then I don't think the university makes full use of all the, the diversity that exists in this university. For example, some of you probably heard it, some of you probably didn't hear it, but say if you look at, I think this was about two or three years ago, the child, one of the children of the president of Ghana actually went through this university. The same way that um, Saif al-Islam Gaddafi went to LSE. In the end, 
that connection was used and donation of 1.5 million pounds was donated to LSE. Now, I don't know about all the other people, like all the other countries and uh, backgrounds they come from and everything, but I think if you, if you, use, if you utilize all the people you got in terms of their connections, there are no people here that are parents or partners or whatever highly placed from different countries. I talk to them every day. So I look at this and I say, whoa, hang on, why can't we use these people? If we can use these people, get them to see, get them to produce there to tell, maybe, for example, in, in, uh, in, in Nigeria, we got something called the Petroleum Trust Fund. If you can prove, if we can prove to the trust fund that, oh, we at DUSA, we, we, we have some of the students who are our members, so we help them in such a way that, you know, it's going to be good for you when, you when they come back to you back home in Nigeria. And then maybe tell them, oh, by the way, we actually, we actually, um, we actually recognize, recognize your independence day on the 1st of October every year just to, just to prove our diversity. I think they'll be more than happy to donate one, donate one or two things to the university. Okay. Follow-up, please. I, I understand what you're saying about getting influential graduates and their families to donate money to the university. And we have a graduate, and we, have, we, we do do that right now. We do raise money, from, the university raises money from graduates. But your, your policy is to work to increase external funding for DUSA and its activities so that better, student, better services don't cost students more. So how do you plan on raising money for DUSA, not the university? Well, DUSA, by its charter, is a charity. All charities can have money donated to them, right? Good. So, it's simple. You can easily tell a government of a country, depending on the links, tell them this is a charity, or even in, within, within the country itself, there are agencies that actually try to be beneficial to anything that citizens of those countries are involved in. If countries can get citizens, if this university, this DUSA, can actually get its members, who are automatically all students who are enrolled in university, to actually say, oh, hang on, this is a policy in my country where this fund is set out, established to help things that we're involved in abroad as citizens, especially if it's a charity. It's tax-free as well. That's even more money. I'm sure people are more than happy to. It's all about engaging the students and actually trying to make DUSA personal to them. If, they, if you think something is personal to you, they surely be, we'll be working hard to, get, to make things better for it. Thank you. Jake, would you like to ask Obi? Question. Yeah, I mean, every year there's already an alumni um, call to alumni for donations to give money to the university that they've been a part of. Um, and apathy is something we've all mentioned in passing tonight. But I wonder how um, you would deal with that on a more immediate level. There seems to be a lot of sort of disconcerted final year students who don't feel that they're very relevant to the voting system at the moment when um, actually the fact that they are alumni going forward, they're particularly important and the reputation what we haven't said is that the reputation of the university going forward is important for every student but 30 years is a long time to wait for that OB how would you try to implement those benefits now yeah thank you very much well firstly I I chose that I should say 30 years arbitrarily because of the university's 25 year plans just give it another five years extra but in response to your question um, I think if like I said, if you, never, if you make something relevant to people, if they, if they can see how this thing generally is relevant to them, or if you recognize somebody, then surely they, they, they will feel attached. They're not going to show apathy to somebody. If, if you showed any, any rational person, for example, that, oh, this cup is useful to you, but it's glass, don't drop it on the floor. They're not going to drop it on the floor. It's, it's, it's pure, that's pure life. If you, if, you, if you show people how things are actually beneficial to them, Put value, make, make, make it valuable to them. If you, if you do something to actually relate something to someone, then surely um, you're not going to have a problem with apathy. So at the end of the day, okay, say for example, the biggest thing coming up now is, is what? Um, St. Patrick's Day. I've seen all the, I've seen all the adverts. It, says, you know, it talks about, oh, St. Patrick's, legendary St. Patrick's Day party and stuff like that. Well, I was born on St. Patrick's Day, and I know that St. Patrick's Day is not all about, it's not about drinking or partying or whatever. It's about... It's literally something that actually celebrates the, the feast of St. Patrick, which kind of like introduced um, Christianity to Ireland. So you've got to like make these things people, um, make these things known to people, relevant to people, and they can actually say, well, okay, my, my uh, Dusa is actually intelligent. Okay, I feel like I want to get, get close to these people. I want to know something. But if you keep throwing parties for every little thing that happens, they just come to party then. When the party's well, over, they just come to the, they just come for party. When, when the party's over, they go home, 
And when they leave university, they still go out there party in other, in other places. So they wouldn't see any need to come back here to do whatever. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, right, question. I think. Can come back on that? I, yeah, okay. Yeah. Briefly, <laughs> yeah. briefly, but Very, please. Very briefly, as briefly. part of your speech there, you were just asking for more for social events, more parties for the 4th of July, for Eid, God knows what else. So St. Patrick's Day is just a part of that sort of multinational um, component of the university. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, I think... I think uh, sorry, I think I'm sorry. I ne I never mentioned... Oh, go, go on. I think at this point it might be helpful if... Um, it was Obi's turn and Ian's turn to ask Jake some questions. Okay, so just, just to respond to Ian, I didn't actually mention quick, a quick party Obi, for the July 4th. I just mentioned acknowledging to the Americans that, yeah, we, just, we celebrate with you guys today, being July 4th, when you're independence. Congratulations. Do whatever. Have fun. And I don't think I, I, don't, I don't mention party. If you want to tell a, a Muslim happy Eid or Eid al-Kabeh, you don't go and throw a party at them. You just wish them happy, 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 happy Eid, and that's it. Okay. So I didn't, I didn't mention parties about, um, for, for all those things. So I just, I just recognizing them so that the people feel personal about the issues, okay? Okay. Do you have a particular question to Jake, Obi? Yeah, okay. I'm just going to ask both of them uh, one question each. Uh, Jake, okay. you've stated in your, you know, stated in your candidate statement about your wonderful relationship with um, senior management of uni and not a word on your engagement otherwise with students. So doesn't that reflect that you're more in bed with senior management than the students, which would obviously make it, which would obviously make it hard for you to bargain in favour of students. Some of the senior management team are actually particularly attractive, but <laughs> now, that said, that said, that said, I am president. I would never mention names. <laughs> that said. Um, you know, I'm president of the Architecture Society, of which we have uh, several hundred members. I'm president of the School of, School of Environment, when we have over a thousand members. And that hasn't come from being in bed with the senior management team every day. That has come from being in lecture halls, um, around studios, around the tower building, engaging with these students from the ground up. And a lot of what I do as um, a representative on the SRC is um, relating back um, motions and points that have come from meetings with individuals, meetings with staff, meetings with staff student consultative committees, and relaying those back to the SRC to take forward to uh, the boards and the committees above the SRC and the main university. As to being in bed with them, again, um, the, the thing I was referring to really was um, a meeting. I, um, Pete Downs came to present his 25-year plan and I stamped my feet a bit, gave him a couple of awkward questions and invited him along for a very, turned out to be a very awkward tour of some of the university facilities. Now, there's nothing polite about my rebuttal to him. In fact, there's a lot of effing and jeffing and what he said, I apologise a little bit for how frank I was being in my engagement with him and he said, no, you know, it's refreshing, Jake, you know, I can see where you're coming from, this is fucking bullshit, his own words, direct quote. And that is where that comes from, you know, so I stamp my feet. You know me well, Obi. You know me from the meetings that I don't sit back. I'm not trodden over. I'm very forceful with what I think I like to get my point across. And I'm not easily trampled by people in a senior um, position. Thank okay. you. Okay, thanks. Um, Ian, Jake. Uh, Jake, you, you tout the fact that you are a school president and in your statement you say that you work closely with each faculty within your school. So how do you respond to some public allegations that we made that you don't work well with certain schools and you focus on architecture? And I've had some other representatives from your school, not just that representative in question, has came to me with issues that, he d that they don't think that if you were elected president of DUSA you would elect, you would represent every student, you would focus on those that you preferred as you do as your, as in your school president role. Of course, it's important to realise realize that the school is made up of several departments and it's the same as what we're not saying now. You know, we as President's uh, candidates go forward with three policies and that's a bit difficult really because the job is so much broader than just three policies. There's so much more to what we do and as school president you've got to engage with over a thousand people and doing that as a president you rely very heavily on your vice presidents and your class representatives and you try as hard as you can to engage with each of those. So from the classroom, they feed back to the class reps, the class reps feed back 
to either the president or the vice president directly, and then you can bring that forward and, and make that motion as you need to. Um, it's incredibly difficult to try and convey, as a full-time master's student in my sixth year as a student here, to spend the time, although I have dedicated a lot of time, a lot of my own time, my personal time, to um, assist the students with their needs, with their worries, and on the occasions that I haven't been able, and I've sent apologies to meetings that I haven't been able to attend, I have been very rigorous about going through the minutes and chasing up any standing items on those minutes and addressing those with Mary Robb in the main library over concerns with the law library movement or timetabling issues with Professor um, Coates, who's head of that. So, though it might not always seem from the outside that each school president isn't doing very much to certain individuals, uh, what I want to do is, is place the... Um, the place the importance on every individual to stamp their feet and do what they want to get themselves heard, either through the class reps who need to be doing more, they need a more active role, and feeding that back to the top tiers, to the presidents and vice presidents, wherever that comes. Thank you. Um, rather, than, rather than them, let's have you. Andrew. Uh, this is a question for Obi. Um, you mentioned about external funding and the LSE. In particular, you mentioned Gaddafi um, and the Gaddafi International Charity giving money to the LSE. Um, first of all, can I ask, can I have two parts to this question? Um, are you suggesting the university and DUSA gets in bed with terrorist governments? And secondly, to point out, to, to point out that the director of the school who received the funding resigned. So are, are, are you suggesting that DUSA and the university open up to that kind of criticism? Sorry, Gaddafi has no links with University of Dundee. I used, as, I used the son of a fame of a president or a past president as an example of how we could use prominent people who passed this university just like the president of Ghana. Now, if you want to mention, if you want to talk, I don't want to talk about politics of Gaddafi and terrorism and all that stuff, but at the end of the day, you see, Gaddafi was a terrorist, so to speak, while the West made him a terrorist. So to speak. <laughs> Sorry? Sorry? I have the uneasy feeling we're not going to get very far down this Sorry, route. What, what, did he, what did he say? Sorry, I can't hear you. Uh, Gaddafi was a terrorist while the West said he was a terrorist. But at the same time, eventually, your prime minister, before he got taken out of power, your prime minister went there. Was, so you were trying to tell me the prime minister went there and was chilling with a terrorist. It's all political. So at the end of the day, Gaddafi has no link to this university. All right? I use that as an anal analogy for may get, 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 getting funding from uh, prominent people who go through this university as well. So let's just make that clear. Thank you very okay. much. Okay. Um, lady at the back. Oh, sorry. Go to Francis first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, being nice, see? This is a question for Obi. Um, can I ask how well you feel as though you've fulfilled your role as chairman of the SRC recently? Um, with criticisms from within the council itself, do you feel as though you have been an effective chair? Yes, I know the exact event you're talking about, and to be honest with you, I feel that I'm happy with my uh, role as chair up to date. And if we want to go into specifics, I'm more than happy to go into specifics, and um, I intend to even be a better servant as this president. Thank you. Can I go to the lady at the back, please? Thank you. Um, this is a question to um, our candidates again. Um, Ian, you mentioned in your opening speech a couple of things about the NUS, and Jade previously said, um, about, mentioned the NUS as well. Um, I voted in the referendum a couple of years ago, and I didn't vote to affiliate, but the NUS do have specifically elected officers for things like they have a women's officer, they have a black students officer, they have an LGBT officer and a disability officer amongst other marginalised groups. My question to the candidates here today is how are you going to make sure that those marginalised voices are heard um, in an exec that doesn't explicitly have officers for those roles? I feel that the, the reason that we introduced the role of Vice President of Engagement last year was to try and get involved with some student groups that perhaps have been disenfranchised, aren't uh, as included in events as uh, the, the, the student body at large. And Andrew has done a great job as VPE, he's done a lot of work behind the scenes, but I think, as people have said, one of the failures of not just 
the, that role, but the exec as a whole is getting engaging with these students from all these different groups. Um, at the moment, I don't think we do do enough for for all for all students groups. But I think we have a fairly representative exec. We have an exec this year that is uh, three women, four men. Uh, we have a number of women running tonight. Um, but yeah, there are certain minorities that aren't well represented, and we need to try and do more to engage them, as Abertay have tried to do this year by engaging with students that perhaps wouldn't have ran normally. But how are you going to do that? Also, that's something I'll have to work with my, my uh, VPE, my VPCC, my VPSA, all the, all the reps that are involved in student representation and try and think of ways that we can get involved with these. There's, there's no specific ways I can think of off the top of my head because I think it's something we need to sit down and properly have a proper think about. Yeah. If elected. No, it's... When elected. <laughs> Would you like to hear from the other two? Uh, yes, please. Jake. Student services is a very important part of the campus, I think, and you'll notice in my speech tonight I never refer to any sort of faction of our um, student population. I think students are students are students, and every indiv uh, individual student is as equal and as relevant as the next. And I think you're living in a dream world. Well, <laughs> good rebuttal, but well, it's true. But the point is that you're bringing it forward, Naomi, as a student, and this is great, you know, and we should have more of those factions coming forward and saying, you are our executive, do more for us. The exec is accountable, the exec is here, the exec is here for every student, whether every student votes or not, this is the exec they landed with. So uh, yeah, we should be working with every minority who feels marginalized and all our student service staff should be um, prepared to work with all of those and should be trained and able and available to all and every, each and every student on campus. And how would you do that? By, well, you know, I don't know whether you know or not, the student services will be moving down to the old RBS, uh, just opposite Premier, where it's much more relevant and accessible for every student. Um, you know, if we can advocate for more training, if we can get more, um, you know, from a bit of a design background, I like good, simple information, better promotion, better publicity of these facilities for every single student. And whether that's through working with VPSA and the minority um, societies, you know, I think we've got to crack this together. It's not, I'm not here as a candidate with every answer. That would be ridiculous. But I've got to have the students. I've got to listen to the students as a potential president and hope that, you know, with the help of people like yourself, Naomi, in societies, we can do that together. Thank you for your answer. I'll be. I mean, in, well, first, I just want to say, I, um, contrary to Jake, I don't think we should engage with my, uh, people who feel just because they feel marginalized. I think we should engage with all sectors of the, of the students, whether they feel marginalized or not. Um, that's the exact reason why I've pointed out that we need to make the thing, we need to make the dues uh, personal to each person and in their own very little way. So say for example, um, well, first I don't know why it was voted for the NU, against the NU, joining the NUS, because I wasn't here. But whatever reasons they were, um, I'm sure the people who voted had their own reasons. Now, in terms of how I intend to um, make, make it more representative of all the various factions here, I think it's just simple. It's something that I actually figured that, okay, maybe um, university or the student union or whatever is not representing people properly, which is something I actually discussed with Kaylee Watson, who spoke earlier. And then we brought up the issue of trying to publicize the SRC more so that we can get out there and get to know what, what issues that are personal to people so that we can discuss them more in the SRC rather than, the, um, rather than things that are personal to individuals in the SRC. Um, so I think I intend to push this even further so that the SRC becomes more popular, DUSA becomes more popular as well, and then people get to know about it and then feel free to approach them. I'm, I'm very approachable myself. I'm always there. Everyone sees me. So... I think, um, I think personally, I'm approachable. Anyone can tell me about anything. And I'm, whenever I'm told stuff, I actually make a genuine effort to take it up. And I intend to bring that spirit as well to do so when I'm elected. Thank you. Okay, Thank you for your um, answer. Next one. Um, President of Abate, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, it'll be a good question. OK, so first of all, I just want to say thanks for the chair and. Uh, Producer President Ian to invite me to ask a question. I just want to say that I think that this is sort of like a bit of proof about the strong relationship I would say that DUSA has currently with Aberty Students Association and sort of to pay a bit of tribute to the relationship that Ian Kennedy has with Aberty um, over the last two years. And I think that was evident in the campaign we had last year to defeat the 
enforced merger that the Scottish Government was, uh, was proposing last year, that we managed to do that as allies. And the question I have is about allies. Um, how, so, and it's sort of twofold. How, the use, how you intend to use allies locally and how you intend to use allies nationally. I do know that at least one of you have mentioned uh, how you tend to work on a national level. Um, so what amongst your policies do you believe that you have will be used to maintain a strong relationship with, with Aberty? And how will you engage or even coexist with the National Union of Students to ensure that Dundee University students win on a national platform? Obi, two minutes. Jake, two minutes. Me in two minutes. Well, for, well, thank you very much, firstly. Well, the in, engaging with Abete is something that I intend to do because, for example, I have links with St. Andrews at the moment. I'm, I'm increasing that, those links with um, playing with Game of Chess, for example, which I introduced to the university. So I'm aware that in Abete is strong. They had links with Abete are quite strong. Obviously, your presence here proves that as well. So eventually, uh, when I get into the position, I'll look, at, I'll, I'll look at all the mechanics and all the links established with the university and I'll look to strengthen them and improve them further. Um, so at the moment, as from my current position, I cannot possibly tell you what those individual links are. I'll have to look into them and I'll look to improve them as I'm already doing with um, St. Andrews at the moment. Thank you. Great. Thank God for chess, right? I can play chess and I've never once joined a society to do so. But, well, no, it's like, come on. So, Abate is part of Dundee. It forms part of the city. The Dundee, when I arrived, was a very up-and-coming city, and the two sides, the, the Dundee and the Abate side, have merged so much without merging politically or, you know, so much so. Dundee as a city has grown, and it's grown with these two parts of that there. And there are a lot of, um, a, lot of a crossover in the social societies we have here and in Abate. I was only last night at a debating society event where I was talking to Abate students about Dundee issues, about Abate issues and how they combine already. And Dundee College actually is something that's been missed out quite a lot. And um, Dundee College is also a big part, there's going to be the merger to be Tayside College. But Dundee College includes a lot of students in our city who also use our facilities in Dusa. And whether people know it or not, there's going to be a lot of shared courses um, with our university so that students will be allowed to take courses in Dundee College, what will be Tayside College, and then come into the second year or third year of our university courses here. So maintaining and increasing and you know, reaffirming that overlap and that connection um, and that relationship is essential, it's paramount as two universities in the same city and in college. Ian. Uh, continuing the relationship we have with Aberté is definitely something I want to uh, continue next year. Um, I already have dealt with Aberté and a number of other universities and Dundee College through my role as Honorary Secretary. Mainly with, through the, the disciplinary process, we work in tandem with other universities to keep them up to date on what's happening in either each university, uh, but also on any other issue that I feel is relevant. For example, today I emailed the President of Edinburgh about an issue that came up within DUSA. Uh, I think working on national campaigns is something, working on national campaigns with our universities is something that's vital. Dundee is a, a university unaffiliated from the NUS, so we need to make sure that on issues such as fees, on visas, uh, other things that, that we, we have a common ground with the NUS, with other universities not affiliated with the NUS, we have to make sure and work with them. Uh, it's funny how you keep mentioning CHESS, but CHESS actually stands for, it's, it's an organisation, the Coalition of Higher Education Students in Scotland, and it's something that Ian Kennedy definitely looked into reforming, or trying to get that back together uh, when he was president, but all that didn't quite, quite work out proper, or quite work out as, as was wanted. Um, it's something I definitely look into, if not through CHESS, but uh, links with the other universities not affiliated with the NUS. <laughs> Mr. Kennedy. Thanks very much. Um, really, I just would like to ask the candidates what, in their opinion, they think the biggest external challenge will be to the university in Dusa, without mentioning um, non-existent budget cuts to the university and the Dusa deficit. Ian? Uh, I think, I'm not sure if it's a challenge, but I think... <laughs> The, uh, the education as a, as a whole in Scotland is changing so much over the, over the past few years through devolution and with the possibility of, of independence on the, on the, in our future. But even if independence doesn't happen, I think 
it gives us a great opportunity to influence our politicians, to make them, them aware of what it is that students want. And whilst during the election, all the, all the uh, parties were, oh yeah, we, we don't want fees, we don't want uh, students to have to pay for their education, but they all seem to be backtracking on this now that it's not an, an election coming up. I want us to con continue piling on the pressure on, on uh, our uh, politicians. We want, I want to lobby them, I want to make sure they are aware that just because there's not an election coming up doesn't mean you can backtrack on all your promises as the Labour Party seems to be doing right now. <laughs> Jake. Uh, I think the university's role and Deuce's role as part of the university in an independent or a potentially independent Scotland will be pivotal and with you know big student population here, a big percentage of campus voters, so potentially um, you know we could have a big part of that vote. But what I was really interested in was Pete Downs' 25-year plan because what that outlines is the role of DUSA, or more specifically the university, in Scotland. What I'd like to see outside of, of Dundee is promoting the university across the UK and across Europe and wider um, across the world. You know, it seems quite primitive to say, you know, of the 25-year plan we want to promote and improve the um, reputation of, of the University of Dundee, which includes DUSA, I suppose, within Scotland, when we have the capacity and the um, potential to be much bigger and much more um, impressionable than that. Will be. Thank you. Um, it's funny you actually asked that question because I discussed that quite recently with someone and I discussed under the context of uh, what Ian mentioned, which was the Scottish independence. Now, personally, as much as I'm quite leaning towards uh, an independent Scotland, I thought that maybe if Scotland voted yes to independence, that maybe they would kind of lose, they would kinda, uh, the university would kind of lose its, its, its attraction, which the weight from the Scotland being part of the UK brings to it, because Scotland on its own is good enough. But then I think the entire thing about the UK, its reach, its, its popularity, everything, has actually to do with exi the, the, the good news about universities in Scotland, which are quite famous worldwide. So eventually, if, for, say for example, um, a yes, it goes through a yes vote, I think it's gonna, be a quite, it's gonna be quite a big challenge to the university and do so as a, as a whole to still have a big selling point, personal selling point, without actually being, oh, a university that's in good old, big old, famous UK. Thank you very much. There's a lady at the back by the, um, sitting on the back of the settee, who's been waving at me for the last 10 minutes. This is quite specific, so I apologise. But, Obi, um, on Tuesday there was a motion to ban the sun, well, to boycott the sun on campus. And you actually abstained from the vote, but then half an hour or so later you took a photograph with the people who were supporting the motion, putting the motion through, and you won. This kind of implies that you only support issues that you, after the fact, and you don't know your own mind. Can you respond to that, please? Yeah, I think it's pretty clear that right from when I came into the, into the um, hall itself, I made it clear to some of the people that I was with at the time that yes, I'm actually in favor of this thing, but then, I also had the right not to vote, even though I was in favour of it, and I just exercised that right not to get involved in the votes. Thank you. Um, there's a lady just, just over to your right. Yep. Hi, it's Katie. Oh, sorry, um, Katie, my eyesight's not <laughs> <laughs> Dundee was recently voted number one for best student experience. To all the candidates, how, can you, how do you feel you'll be able to continue this and improve on what um, Mr. Kennedy and the exact have already done? Jake. Thanks, Katie. <laughs> it's, it's a very tricky balancing act, I think, between, I hate to say it again, but budgets and bringing the students in. We've got more students than ever coming through the door, but spending less than ever. So trying to get the balancing act and it's not all, of course, about you know, getting people in and drinking. That's not the way this works. But um, it's very difficult to try and maintain um, a high level of student experience in things like the NSS surveys and um, budgets. It's things like Connor will talk about with the living wage and maintaining, you know, paying the staff reasonable wage to maintain a very pleasant campus to be on, which just generally improves student experience. And, and sort of things like implementing that whilst maintaining a high standard of um, 
of facilities on campus, of services for students, like the new uh, student services downstairs, um, to be able to work with the, um, the good staff that we have on offer and use all the better and improved facilities that I hope we can drive forward and, and work with the staff to achieve. Obi. Yeah, in terms of student life, I, well, as much as most people like to talk about the parties and all, I think there's actually a bit more to student life. For example, your academic life, which is actually the most basic thing for you to be in a university. Um, for example, if, if this whole thing I just talked about earlier in terms of trying to raise the funding for university and do so, if it goes through properly, which I expect that it that will, I think if, you, if you're able to establish 24-hour access to the library, that's, that's making things easier for students academically and that's improving students' academic life. In terms of the social life, obviously we've got the uh, parties and all that as well. Um, but in terms of social life, I think it's actually more involved. A gentleman earlier mentioned things about debates, getting people involved in actually things that actually benefit them in terms of, and not, not just partying, so to speak. I go, about, I go about to various house parties, for example. Even if, even if you're focused on parties, I go about to various house parties all the time. And I see people who throw house parties, who, who spend all sorts of money on all sorts of things. Now, if they can be convinced, for example, to make that Dusa or the Omono or whatever, any place where they play music here, that they actually play the sort of songs that they like, they'll be more than happy to come here and spend all that money here. That helps Dusa. That helps reduce the deficit that we just talked about earlier. Then in terms of financial life as well, which is part of student life, I think if you help students actually secure jobs, jobs that, actually, that are meaningful to them, even if it's little part-time jobs to keep them busy when they're not studying, that actually helps them so a student can leave the university and say, oh, okay, this university actually helped me, help my life as a student, help improve, help my academic life, help my social life, and help my financial life while I was a student as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, we'd better let Ian have a chance to make a comment. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you. I'll try my best. Uh, student experience survey is an interesting one because quite often with uh, student surveys it uh, focuses on academic issues but the student experience survey took into account things like DUSA, like the library services, like our societies and this is something we definitely need to keep working on. We need to keep improving the, these, these facilities and working with our societies to ensure that the events they, help, they hold do um, uh, students attend them, students get involved with them. The student experience uh, takes into account things like the library, and I, I agree with Obi, we should be fighting towards 24 hour care, uh, 24 hour opening hours of the library. But it's, it's as a, a member of the exec, you, you will sit on various committees throughout the university, and as Pete Downs puts forward in his uh, vision and curriculum for excellence in the future, um, that we, we do want to support excellence within the university and coming number one in that survey is something we definitely need to strive on and we need to look at what areas we excel in and not only promote them but also look at areas we don't do as well and try and see what we can do better. Um. Oh, okay, I couldn't hear anybody from here but uh, please keep it down. Um, brother. Our brother from the Labour Party. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, you've all talked about the living wage. Um, I was just wondering how you plan to advance the, the case for the living wage with university management um, if you were elected. Um, I was also wondering what your presidential vision would be um, for uh, future funding within higher education and further education. Um, and in particular, where does widening access um, feature into that? Struth. Um how many, which, one, which one would you like answered? The first one or the second one? Because I don't think you can have both, because I don't think there's time. The second one. The second one being? Sorry? The second one. Widening access. Widening access. Well, I've already sat in a couple of meetings about this this past month, and it's something that every department in the university is having to um, deal with at the moment. The widening access for student access. Um, and also, like, Okay, but the, the widening access point, there's already this thing in place called um, MD40, which is about um, maximum deprivation 40, which is identifying areas, particularly in Scotland, um, and filling a quota of intake of students from those areas to enable them to have a university experience and, and um, be part of our degree programmes here at Dundee. And what I found in the departments that I've been dealing with, namely um, School of Environment, admittedly, but what I have found, and... Um, Professor Duck said that it was actually 
a reflection of the wider university was that we already fulfill, we already fill the capacity for MD40s and the intake is just about um, being more selective but open. And the, the problem that we really have is not about getting the applications from the MD40s, maximum deprivation, 40 areas. It's about the retention of these students. And, and what they do talk about is, is these students as converting them and getting them to stay here. And this is actually what DUSA is pivotal for. It's nothing, it's not about academia. I was in a meeting recently, it was a school board meeting, and the staff were wondering how they could be more friendly and approachable at open days. And I said, no, you know, it's nothing to do with staff. Students want to know much more than how friendly the staff are going to be when they're marking their work. And so trying to bring these in and convert them, as, as the um, academic term is, by offering them the brilliant facilities that we already have here, the improved facilities that I think we could with all of these ideas combined going forward and um, working hard at, as a whole university rather than just an exec. Ian, quickly. <laughs> I'll try. Um, I, I agree with what Jake said. I've written it down. It is, it's, Dundee does do well on getting people from underprivileged backgrounds to come to Dundee, but its dropout rates is a problem for us. Uh, we need to make sure that students on courses that have particularly high dropout rates have the support in place. We have reps uh, on the SRC and, and the exec and, of course, student services who are there to try and help students do more study. Perhaps we should put on more workshops on, on how to do exams, essays, uh, deal with stress, things like this. I would love to work with the VPSW on things like this. With regards to higher education funding in Scotland, for me personally, education is one of the most vital things that our government should be funding. Scotland is the home of free education. It's, we, need, we need to support our students, whether they're, they're home students, EU students, our UK students, international students. They should all receive uh, as much care uh, and attention towards their degrees as possible. Thanks, Ian. Quick one, Obi. A quick one, because I want to move on to, I want to move on, give other people a chance to ask uh, questions quickly. Thank please. you. Um, well, they mentioned MD40. I'm not totally sure what that is, but since you talked about higher education funding, I personally think that that's something for the politicians. I, that's my opinion on that one. If I'm, if I'm correct, if I'm, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, but um, if you're going to talk about higher education funding, I would have thought that maybe that's something that's going to be sorted out politically, maybe in Parliament. If not, then I'm not aware of that. You don't think so? Yeah. No. Or more money to from non yeah, that's what, that's what I'm talking about. That's something political. Not, it's not something we do in Dundee. I don't expect us to talk about funding in, in trying to expand funding in the university. We're all politics. Yeah, if you're going to, if you're going to, right. talking about lobbying is a different thing. But that's, so if you're talking about lobbying, that's what something I intend to do. I mean, I, if, I, if I intend, if I'm going to have to uh, help people from underprivileged backgrounds, and I'm more than happy to do that, but if you're talking about in terms of maybe discussing um, how to expand education funding in DUSA, I don't exactly see how that's going to work because it's like trying to say, oh, I'm going to fight the cuts. Okay. It's not something for us to do. It's something that has done in Parliament. All you can do is put pressure on them, and okay. like which, you, which you call lobbying. Thank okay, you. thanks very much. Um, there's a Gaddafi chap might have deeper pockets, perhaps. There's a, there's, a, there's a chap at the back who looks faintly anguished on the left, I think. If you could keep the questions short, that would be handy as well. I'll try. I'll Cheers. Try. <laughs> I'm just, I'm not being angry, but like, I've tried so hard to get into uni this university. And like, study college students are treated like trash, to be fair. So how is anyone going to try and like, retract that and just you know, keep that to a minimum, to be fair? Thank you. I think we take your point. Would you like to say something, Jake? Yeah, uh, sorry, I'll be brief in. Uh, a lot of our work with Dundee College is already um, started rolling. It's going to improve only as far as Dundee College um, amalgamating with Angus College and becoming Tayside College, as I said earlier. But what we're doing in such as um, courses in the School of the Environment, um, like Geography or, or Environmental Sciences, is having the one or two year college courses so that uh, students who don't have the A-levels perhaps to meet the requirements to come to D uh, Dundee University can do the foundation course, as it were, at Dundee College and come in and join the students who've come on from A level or standard or higher grade uh, level and join them in second year at the same level. So our um, incorporation with Dundee College is, is, is really getting there and it's really, really improving vastly. So good luck next time. I think we'll just do two more. There's the lady here and then I'll go to the guy with the beanie at the back. I think it's a beanie or is it a baseball cap? 
Um, this is a question for Obi. As president, you say your role will be to engage with and represent all students. How do you feel you can do this when you've been accused of racism and in growing females who wish to speak during SRC meetings? Thank you very much. Well, you brought this up earlier at SRC meeting and maybe you want to be more specific since there's more people here to talk about the things. If, what are the accusations by who and the exact, the exact, up, please do, yeah. Um, the allegations are, Obi met a member who is a member of the SRC upon greeting this person who has a history of family from Palestine and she has done a huge amount of work with people who are seeking asylum and immigration issues. Upon greeting this person, he said, I've been looking for you like an African's been looking for an American visa. In relation to the female issues, the issue raised that when females wish to speak at SRC, some females have had their arms up for the entire meeting and they feel they've been ignored. When it was raised that people feel they've been ignored in SRC, it was asked of the group whom, how many people feel they've been ignored. Of those who put their hand up, all five of them were females. Okay, thank you very much. Well, as an, as an, as an African, as an African, a Nigerian specifically, uh, well, dual citizenship, but a Nigerian, I've had to, um, well, try to get an American visa to go to Georgia. And I've gone to the American embassy and I've seen what it's like there. So if I, so for talking from experience, if I said I'm looking, I've been looking for someone for so long, like an African looking for an American visa, I, I don't think there's anything racist or anything inappropriate with that. I'm just talking from my experience. But I'll tell you what's inappropriate. What's inappropriate is come into a forum where people want to talk about things that affect them personally at the university and do so and trying to turn it into something of a personal attack and obviously slander which i think personally is inappropriate that's what it's, that's what's inappropriate thank you very much <laughs> sorry in relation to the second thing you mentioned um well it is unfortunate that people want to talk and obviously i don't get them talking but for example if jake is talking and we all know that Jake talks for quite long in SRC meetings. If you want to raise, yeah, sorry, if you want to raise your hand for the entire 15 or 20 minutes, Jake is going to talk. That is your problem, not my problem. So if, by, by the time he's finished talking and your hands are still up. No, sorry, sorry, no, no. If Jake is going to talk for 15 minutes and you want to keep your hands up for those 15 minutes and you get tired and put it back down, then I don't see it. That is not my problem, okay? okay. The gentleman has said, the chairman has said... I think I'd be inclined to stop sorry. digging at this point. The chairman has said, there's only two people remaining to talk. Thank you very much. Um, one more, the guy with the beanie. Is it a beanie? Yeah, okay. Hello, hi, good evening all. I'm Salvador. Yeah, first I would like to buttress on the last uh, question that was raised before asking mine. Uh, she talked about racism. First, what is racism all about? Racism is not anything, racism has nothing to could, do with um, comments. Could first. you do me a favor? Could we have the question, please, uh, okay. rather than comments? Thank you. Okay, fine. The question is, Jack, in your statement earlier, you talked about commitment to the student body. Uh, please, can you kindly in detail state what your commitments are to the student body and what are the essential skills or qualities you have to make them come true? Yeah, well look, I'm sat here, you know, you could be sat in my seat, any one person could be sat in my seat, anybody is eligible for nomination to this position here. <laughs> I am sat here, I'm putting myself forward, I said, you know, I was quite open about it, I have um, other university places, a couple of job offers, but this is what I'm passionate about doing. I've got myself involved this year through the SRC, I put myself forward, I've been nominated and, and supported as a candidate for school president, for society president, and here I am putting myself forward and um, bringing myself to you as a potential candidate, my commitment as far as that goes is quite clear, I think. If it goes further, you know, my commitment is about um, putting myself forward, putting myself out there, speaking to people, and as Obi very kindly points out for me, my passions and my um, enthusiasm in meetings, in um, providing an opinion on behalf of the students that I represent in motions coming forward is undeniable right there. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. Um, no. I'm at, ben? I'm, I'm at risk of um, ignoring a young lady with glasses, so... <laughs> um, sorry, I have another question. Uh, one, one each, please. I, I need Very to brief. Go. I'll be brief, please. Well, all right, quickly then. Yeah, then, Ian, you talked about improving 
producer and correcting the failures or mistakes of the previous or of your successors and of your predecessor and his team. Please, how do you intend improving DUSA and correcting the failures and mistakes you talked about earlier? I don't think I, I, there's, there's, there's a, not necessarily mistakes and failures across the board. This is, is a great organization, number one student union in Scotland, uh, number three in the UK. And yeah, I've been a member of that team and perhaps I could have been involved more in doing things throughout uh, my, my course. But I've been doing this alongside my studies. Um, so I think I've done, I, the amount of things I've done above and beyond my role as honorary secretary have been I've been, I've been fairly impressive, I, I would say. Um, with regards to specific failures, I think I've gone through them already. I think that I, we, Deuce's biggest failure is getting involved with students. We need to make ourselves, we need to get out there more. We need to work with the VPE. We need to get them more, uh, we need to get students more involved in the, in the SRC, in the exec, in university committees. We need to make students aware of what it is that all these things do so that they can get more interested and they feel more part of DUSA and the university. Hi, this is a question for Obi, and it goes back to a comment that was said uh, earlier regarding the vote uh, at the SRC while you're abstained regarding the sun. Um, are you, at, at the AGM, sorry. Um, are you aware that as potential president of the exec and i.e. a leader for the students, that you are the voice yeah. of the students and therefore abstaining for us or at least in my opinion, is not an option. And I would just want to know if you're aware of that. I'm aware of that, thank you. Okay, there's a, the last thing, I'm conscious of the fact that both of these two had a chance to... <laughs> you have been waving, okay, go on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hi, hi. Alex Schilling, Deuce TV. Um, this is for Jake. You refer to student dissatisfaction in the context of students not bothering to vote, but in your opinion, what's the difference between student dissatisfaction and student apathy? And how do you plan to address this problem if you get in? By exactly the points that I made earlier, I suppose, by better promotion on campus, better publicity of our successes. What, what a lot of people don't realise is actually the SRC with the exec work, work bloody hard and they do achieve an awful lot. It's just that we're not very good at shouting about what we actually do. You know, the fact we have already this year longer opening hours, um, you know, the reporting system that Ian has been introducing and all the kind of things that students have been hankering for and asking for and lobbying for are coming forward now, streaming through exactly for that point. In terms of um, dissatisfaction, I want to be able to break that dissatisfaction by, uh, along with apathy, I suppose, by having an accountable exec and making an obvious connection, whether that be through student services or by a more at widely promoted exec and SRC councillors so that students that are dissatisfied feel comfortable, able and like I said know that they can and know how they can, two things I both said in my speech, bring forward the dissatisfaction and make a difference themselves. Each being, you know, I hate to coin a Kennedy speech but you know, um, ask not what Deuce can do for you but what you can do for Deuce and it's, it's <laughs> you, you can have that one but it's, it's really did. important. You know? What do you okay. say is the difference, though, between student apathy and, 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 uh, and student dissatisfaction? Yeah. Do, it, 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 do, do you think there has been more of an onus on the students? Is it not just up to the exec? No, I think students, if students are dissatisfied, then there are sort of different parts of that. Students will be satisfied. A lot of dissatisfaction about, you know, the motion that was passed about the sun being removed from the shop on, on my Facebook page this morning. But, you know, that's dissatisfaction. It's very quiet dissatisfaction. There's dissatisfaction, like Connor here is bringing forward the motion for the living wage and lobbying that in a very public dissatisfied way. Apathy is what, you know, what we can all be guilty of in different factions of the university, but the people that aren't bothered that this is happening might know that it's happening, but aren't bothered to come because, not that they're dissatisfied with what they're having, but these things happen because they happen anyway, really. Okay, thanks very much. I'm conscious of that um, both these two have asked Obi questions, so I'd give Obi the chance to ask a, no, if I, you I, wish I, I to have them. a question for Jason. Me no, no, both of us haven't asked them. All oh, right. Yeah. Well, both, if both of you wish yeah, to ask. Uh, but on, again, Jay. could we keep it short? Because I'm now conscious it's 11 o'clock and way past my bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. I'll just make it quickly. Um, um, Ian, in your candidate statement, you said something about um, this notion that dues are all clicky and all that stuff. But then you've been part of this 
clicky thing you've mentioned for two years right now. And obviously, you've brought it up in your candidate statement still. So what have you done to change this clicky thing that you talked about or you criticized? And like you've been part of it for two years. And also, in your opinion, what have your efforts, if any, had? Again, this is something I want to work on. This relates back to the better communication and engagement idea I've got. Uh, since I've been in the exec, what I've tried to do to promote through my role as Honorary Secretary was through the publicising of SRC motions, some of which are very relevant to students, as well as making sure that students know what their representatives do for them. And whilst, yes, DUSA is often quite cliquey within societies, within the exec, I myself had nothing to do with DUSA when I first ran. Uh, I was running against someone who was involved in societies, I wasn't, and I think it is definitely possible to get involved from out with this, this, the, in, the, this inside group because um, I managed and I think since I came into office it's, it's been it's definitely been improved upon and um, we've had other people who've got involved with the SRC and with the exec that haven't had prior experience there. Okay, Jake, have you got anything you want to ask as a last one? Well no, I suppose it's a point for comments in fairness really. I, um, you, you know, I only recently really, as I said in my speech, became aware of, of the exec and the role of the exec and the SRC committee and, and part of um, facilitating my um, successes or my uh, position in this has been through Ian's hard work and as I said I think Ian is a very good um, secretary within DUSRI, he's had two years here now in which perhaps you know I think Obi was saying he could have affected a bit more of a change rather than just talking about the issues we still have but I you know a lot of what Ian's done has been about promoting student issues and has been very hard working on the committee. I feel at a bit of a disadvantage running against him because I'm aware that he's such a strong candidate and I'm very respectful of um, this level of competition and, you know, I sound like I'm downplaying, but I, I think I'm here because I think I could be a good president for you. I'm outspoken, I can be belligerent, but I'm forceful and I like to get stuff done. No nonsense. Ian too, I've only ever really experienced him in his impartial role as minute taker, whatever it is. He's efficient at that, he's, he's good at that, but, like, vote for me, come on. <laughs> I, I think at that point we could all say that um, you've had a fair old whack at these three. Um, you've got three potentially good candidates here. Um, and I must admit, tonight has been very nice, very enjoyable, very pleasant. You've all been remarkably polite and pleasant. Not like it used to be, I have to say. <laughs> but uh, no, none the worse for that. Thanks very much, folks. Thank you. Thank you.